Louis Steamer Sun. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsor of the United States Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Buy Schnucks, the friendliest stores in town. At Schnucks, we do our best for you. And by the people at McDonald's, St. Louis and Metro East. by machine. Each tube's got to be custom fit to transfer weight into forward momentum. After all, a champion should ride a champion. To everyone who's working hard for America's Olympic effort, this Bud's for you. Pull them, push them, twist them, bend them, snap them on, and then extend them. Hot boys! Make a marsh and make your ship pop, rip, crinkle, zip, pop, boy. Sound like fun. Stretch them, snap them, overlap them, never know just what'll happen. Pop, boy. Happy meal. <laughs> Get three pop, boys pieces in every McDonald's happy meal. Pop, boys. Happy meal, McDonald's and you. Bringing you the best, that means taking the extra step at Schnucks. Ask Tony Vince. He starts early every morning dealing with growers from around the world to select the finest nature offers. Fresh produce is always in season at Schnucks. Ann Richards likes that. She knows some jobs just can't be done from 9 to 5. She appreciates the time and dedication it takes to ensure quality. After all, there's simply no substitute for the very best. We've got the best right here, right here where we live. It's good to know nowhere we go has got so much to give. Aren't you glad you live where there's colonial bread? It's baked nearby, then sealed warm from the oven. So it's always delivered soft and fresh with the flavor your family loves. Colonial bread, we've got the best right here.
Yeah, one, two, one, two, hello. Check one, two. <laughs> Anthem's next. Good evening, welcome to Kemper Arena, Kansas City. We apologize for some of the audio problems we've been having. The crowd is quiet. Now it's time for our national anthem. It's game three of the MISL Western Division quarterfinal series. The St. Louis Steamers visiting the Kemper Arena here in Kansas City to take on Pat McBride's Comets of KC. Bob Carpenter along with Bob Burnett. We apologize for some of the audio problems we've been having throughout our early part of the telecast and simulcast this evening. Bob Burnett, we have been talking about Diego Pesa. We've been talking about Gordon Hill. Those are the two key players. Everything's revolving around right now. But really, are they as key as everybody thinks they are? Because you know they're going to get their goals and get their points. Maybe it's the other role players for each club that's going to make a big difference. And the Steamers have shown they are more deep in that department when it comes to guys coming off the bench. I think that is the difference. I don't think the depth is with Kansas City as it is with St. Louis. Diego Pesa being on a hot streak that he is opens up some things for Ricky Davis that you know you can't shut him out for the series along with Don Ebert and that's important the is going to keep going if we can shut off Gordon Hill and Tasso Katsukas and that's a big chore I think we're going to be all right we're going to mark up on Gordon Hill and let Tasso do his thing we've got the greater depth we're 2-0 oh. this can be a great ball game Bob a lot of steamer fans are here a lot of KC fans as well of course but this building is not sold out which is a shock to me because they have drawn so well for the St. Louis Kansas City series up here. A lot of things taking place with this franchise off the field though and we'll talk more about that as the night goes on because they're gonna have a change in management here. The Lywickies are departing when the season is over and Mr. Schoenstatt has decided not to sell the team. The Lywickies wanted to purchase it and run it their own way. They did not get their way and they are leaving Kansas City and the fans at this time I would have to say are siding with the front office rather than the ownership of the franchise. That's neither here nor there. It's because it's going to be decided on the field. St. Louis with Don Ebert, Ricky Davis up front, kick it off, Slobo up the left wing. Ebert knocked off the ball by Clyde Griffiths and Jeff Mantell makes the call. Mantell is the official, the senior referee is Gino DiPolito, and in the penalty box is Hermano Rizzo, and quickly some heat from the Kansas City bench got Jeff Mantell a little bit upset. I think the officials have gotten some orders from the league office to make it tight and call them quick, and that's a good move. Pat McBride was fined for his actions going after referee after the referee in St. Louis after game two. That was Bill Maxwell that he went after, and so some money out of the coffers of the Comets because of that. Clive Griffiths will kick it in as the Steamers put it up into the crowd. Griffiths back on defense with Schiraldi. Ebert got a piece of it. Ball bouncing to midfield ahead for Greg Villa. He goes down the right wing, cuts it back inside at the red line for Fredrickson. 
Gordon Hill at the left point, up over the top. Fredrickson looks for it. Ebert got there at the same time. And they say a foul on who? The official from the other side of the field, Gino DiPolito, called the foul on Mark Fredrickson. It'll be a St. Louis free kick on the left side in the steamer defensive zone. Bob in St. Louis, Ricky Davis and Tasso Arena and uh, Donnie Ebert were together, and that's a good move for us. They switched some defenders, and I think that uh, we're going to see something out of Donnie Ebert we haven't seen, I think, to put the ball in the back of the net because I don't think Clive Griffiths can stay with him. DePede gave it up. Here's Ebert, right wing, and on goal, faking, shooting, and it's on goal and a quick save by DePede. He was already down, and Donnie been able to lift that ball high into the net. It would have been in the net for a 1-0 St. Louis lead. DePede's been a bit shaky in this series. He played well, I thought, in game two, but still gave up seven goals. He didn't get a lot of help from his defense in that contest. Ebert down the left wing against Griffiths. Bart Davis, Ricky, a weak shot goes wide to the right. It'll be picked off the boards by Fredrickson. One thing you can look for from Kansas City tonight, almost constant, never-ending playing time for Tasso Katsukas and Gordon Hill. Daryl Duran intercepts down the middle, top of the penalty area, right side, Sammy Bick shoots it in. The payday, a piece of it, Cacciatore knocked it away from him. And then Fredrickson gave it back, but Jeff was called for the foul. We played a minute 27 seconds in the contest and are scoreless so far. St. Louis wanting to sweep. They do not want to come back here next Wednesday night and maybe back to the arena a week from tonight. Good steal of midfield by Cacciatore with help from good defender Neil Cohen. Now it's Daryl Duran from Redmond Lane across the red line. Darryl toward his left, Stremlaw guarding him. In the corner, Stremlaw, nice defensive play, and Greg Villa gave it back to DePede. Probably some strategy opening up out there. They love the counterattack down the left wing. Mikowski got a throw from DePede. Tony Bellinger broke that up. Mikowski takes a tumble in front of Redmond Lane. They're going to call Redmond for the foul. It'll be a KC free kick on the left wing. And, man, you don't want to go after the officials verbally tonight, Bob. I think they're going to be pulling some quick cards for any descent penalties. And that one be. was going on goal, and it was headed out by Neil Cohen. It'll be a KC kick in on the left side. Comets have never won a playoff game in the MISL. They were hammered by San Diego last year in two straight. The soccer is, of course, the eventual championship winners. And then the Steamers, of course, have taken the first two here. And Slobo has never been beaten in this building by a Kansas City team. So that's a statistic that Seamer fans have to feel good about as well. A couple of substitutions during the timeout. Makowski left corner with the kick in. He's got Clark at the point. Hill, Strimlaw, and Katsukas in front, all their big guns. Shooting it in, it deflects off of the leg of Ty Keo. Bounces high off the boards. Bellinger heads it down. Tony clears to the midfield, and Timmy Clark picks it up. Clark dumps it back in. Left wing, it's high in the air. Gordon Hill volleys it near the glass. Comes loose, and Tony Bellinger picks one off easily. Bellinger across the midfield circle. KC red line. Down the middle against Strimlock. Cuts it right. Mikowski's measuring him. He tries to center it. Mikowski got there to get a piece of it and whacks it all the way down the floor. Slobo picks it up. Near side, Daryl Duran. Three and a half minutes, check it two and a half into the game. Duran, Bellinger, down the right side on a first time pass. Clark cuts in front of Diego Pesa. Pesa trying to get a whack at it. It goes all the way back to DePeda. John Strimlaw against Tony Bellinger on the near side. Timmy Clark on the far side for Tasso Katsukas. Great steal by Daryl Duran. Here he comes two on two with Pesa. Daryl shooting and he hit it wide about two yards to the far post. Had Niego in the middle, but he was well covered. Now Timmy Walters a steal. Niego gets it back. Centers it for Duran. They got Carl Rose left point. Carl receives it from Duran in the corner against Strimlaw. Carl juggling with it. A whistle and a foul, and they got Carl Rose for backing in. But the Steamers are playing very well at midfield, Bob, and that is their pressuring style, intercepting those passes that sets up the offensive opportunities. They've taken Timmy Clark off of Donnie Ebert, and they switched him in this ball game to Diego Pesa. And I don't think it's going to make any difference. If anything, it may open Donnie Ebert. But Diego's, he's going to score no matter who's on him because he's hot. Down the left wing, it was Carl Rose being pressured by Hayes up into the crowd from Slobo. We'll have a kick in and a timeout. 11.29 left first quarter. We're scoreless from KC. And this is Steamers. KC on the left point kick in. Mark Fredrickson around Pesa to Katsukas in the left wing corner. Sammy Bick, the team captain, watching him. Nice steal by Diego. Puts it ahead for Ricky Davis. Ricky against Clive Griffiths. Also trailing is Chiraldi, who trips up Davis from behind. That'll be a foul. 
And it'll be a St. Louis free kick in the neutral area. It'll be Sammy Vick taking it for the Steamers. On the near side for Ty Keo. Up over the top, it's going to go out of play. It'll be a kick in for KC. And we played three minutes and 45 seconds so far. And we're in for a good one tonight. Have the feeling a lot of crowd here. They're making a lot of noise, of course. Great atmosphere here at the Kemper Arena. But as we said earlier, this contest not sold out. And I really can't believe that they haven't sold out a playoff game here after numerous sellouts during the regular season, especially when their enemies from the Gateway City were here. Might be that this game is televised and back home right here and keep some people away. Bob, real quickly, uh, They've tried to change some strategy, but I think it's going to backfire on it. That's Kansas City. I mean, they've switched again. Griffith on Ebert and Chiraldi on Davis. Of course, that was that way last time, and that's a war. And Mikowski on Walters and Clark on Pesa. But what the Comets don't have, we've got an extra line and Lane and Cacciatore. So that means that those four defenders are going to have to try and mark up on six of our forwards over four quarters, and I think that could pay off at the end. One thing we've talked about also several times during the season as it goes out of play on the near side for a KC kick-in, is the fact that the payday, when he has the ball, the steamers are not concerned with him. He's not that good with his feet. They'll mark up man for man all over the floor and let the payday bring it up. And sometimes that spells disaster for Kansas City. Long ball down the left side. Ty Keo for Don Ebert. Ebert turning Griffiths in the corner. He's loose. Centers it. And Chiraldi knocks it away. Neil yeah. Cohen can't get it away from John Hayes. Here comes Kansas City down the far side. Griffiths to his right. Katsukas to his left. Griffo a shot. And Katsukas put it up into the crowd. He was at a bad angle. That would have taken an unbelievable deflection by Tasso Katsukas to get it on goal. Dave Clemens a little bit concerned, but his team has had the better of the play so far with 10.25 left in a scoreless first quarter. Johnny Hayes a runner, and if you give him space, he can burn you, and it opened that way for him. But prior to that, right before that, Donnie Ebert again, he beat Clive Griffith, and he came in on a bad angle and tried to play it back. And that's the second time early. I look for him to have a good night again. If we can get somebody coming up from the back because he will give the ball off well, we could get some scores from our backs. Duncan McEwen down the left wing for Ebert after Griffiths had taken away from Donnie. Not Clive Griffiths, a good hard slide tackle, and here he comes. McEwen helping out. That makes it a three-on-three. Three. Left side, Gordon Hill looking to cut it on goal. He hits it into the crowd, and it'll be a St. Louis goal kick. As we've played exactly five minutes now, the teams will change line as Ebert, Bellinger, and company walks off. Coming on for St. Louis will be that scooter line we've talked about of Redmond Lane, Jeff Cacciatore, Duncan McEwen, a great speedy midfielder behind them, and then Sammy Bick and Carl Rose. Sammy Bick will have to be careful because Gordon Hill, in their two shifts in a row, he'll stay in. He's going to start lagging back because he knows that Sammy Bick likes to push up and get in on the attack. So if he does, we're going to have to have help from Carl Rose, and that's important so we just don't let him in there clean because the Pady will look for him. He gets a ball for a quick outlet pass. They're going to let Slobo bring it up to the red line. On the near side, Redmond Lane knocks it down off the boards. Wants to wind up. It's blocked by Tim Clark. Goes right to Sammy Bick. On the near side, Daryl Duran against Greg Villa. Duran looking over to the left side momentarily. Now he gives it for Sammy. He heads it into the left wing corner. Nobody there except for DePede, who knocks it ahead to Gordon Hill. His clearance knocked down by Sammy Bick. Sammy got the ball, and Hill went down. And Mantell was right there to make the call. It'll be a KC free kick in their own defensive end. DePede, very tentative tonight. He fumbled two balls on the ground. He came out to receive that ball. He gave a bad pass. We almost intercepted. I think stay on him tight. Now another foul of midfield. A shouldering foul on Redmond Lane, again called by Jeff Mantell, who's really calling it close. And thus, the numerous whistles and stoppages in play here in the first 5 minutes, 40 seconds of the game. Header by Duran to clear after a Villa centering pass. Redmond Lane, far boards, looking back around the boards nicely to Slobo. Gordon Hill pressuring there. Slobo line drives it. It eludes Cacciatore, but Redmond Lane picks it up down the right side, slams it off the boards in front. Redmond Lane did not get the angle on the boards that he wanted. Now Gordon Hill dumps it back to Mikowski. Far side for Strimlaw. Up over the top, Mikowski running. Slobo getting there. Great volley clearance by the St. Louis goalkeeper. No small task with a guy like Mikowski steering you in the face. Out on top, Mikowski off the boards in front. Knocked down nicely by Sammy Beck. And Villa was pushing him from behind. St. Louis will have a free kick. Kansas City playing with reckless abandon so far this first quarter. There's nothing to lose in St. Louis. They always play two defenders back, but now they're pushing one up. They're trying to go for that first score, that early score to build up momentum. Steamer goal kick quickly goes to the other end where DePede picked it up. 
And we're going to get a penalty on Diego Pesa. I don't know what for, but he did something after the whistle. And Diego Pesa and maybe John Hayes, I think both of them are going to go to the penalty box. Timmy Clark, I think, and Diego Pesa. They must be just shoving one another after the ball was gone, trying to get possession. Seems like to me, problem down there. 6.29, the time of the penalties. Pesa and Clark, both were on sportsmanlike conduct. That is Diego's first couple of penalty minutes in the playoffs. For Timmy Clark, the same. So each team a man short. St. Louis will send out Ricky Davis, Timmy Walters, Tony Bellinger, and Carl Rose. Long ball down the left wing. Gordon Hill, who never seems to sit down. Mikowski and Katsuka. Chiraldi, the other Comet out there. Ahead to Chiraldi. Looking in on goal. Carl Rose defending. One, two. A shot and a save by Slobo. What a great pass by Gordon Hill as they had Carl Rose standing flat-footed. Katsukas at the point. This guy can shoot. And a nice block by Carl back to midfield. But what a great pass by Gordon Hill. Chiraldi did not finish very well. He should have first-timed it, Bob. He tried to control right. it. Gordon Hill, you know, great distributor balls. He can also shoot. Here's a guy you don't want to hit. Oh, Katsukas beat Timmy Walters. Now Hill has shot, and Bellinger got in front of it. It'll be a kick in for KC on the right wing boards. This line is ever so dangerous. When you stop Gordon Hill and stop Tasso Katsukas, you're probably going to beat Kansas City. But it's a very difficult thing to do because they play about 60% of the time out there. On 4-4, four four, there's more space that we really have to be sure. We're going to have to match him up. Walters pushes it past Chiraldi going up the left wing. Timmy now holds up. He's got Ty Keo open down the right side. Here comes Ty in from the point. Davis is in front. A shot. Mikowski turned his back and still blocked it. Gordon Hill double teamed down the left side. He's got Mikowski trailing off the boards. Slobo plays it away. It goes into the crowd. Slobo is trying to play it to himself. And the two fingers held up by some of the fans meant nothing. It'll be a kick in for the Comets. On the left side with 728. We're just over halfway in to the first quarter, and it's scoreless. Who will get the first one? We shall see. Not too long from now, I would think. Defensive marking, a great key right here. Mukowski. Bellinger got a piece of it, and then Fredrickson ran right by it and ran himself into the net. He's called for a foul, and it'll be a St. Louis defensive free kick. We can catch them if we mark defensively very, very sound. They're really coming at us very reckless. We can get back at them with quick transition. Qu I think we can get a, a super goal real quick. Slobo along down the left side. Davis against Mikowski in front. Ooh, DePeta got a piece of it. Ricky tried to sneak one on goal. He hit the near post with it. DePeta was right there to make the save. Now Fredrickson against Davis. There are 35 seconds left in the penalties to Pesa and Clark. Far side, Tasso Kitsukis. Cross his own red line in midfield. Bellinger watching. Fredrickson making a run off the ball down the left wing, trying to receive it. It bounces over his head. But Davis was called for pushing off, and KC gets a free kick dangerously close to the St. Louis goal, only about seven yards to the right of Slobo. Mark Fredrickson will take it. A two-assist man in the playoffs. Tried to center it for Gordon Hill. Gordon Hill wanted it off the ground so he could guide it and volley it on goal. They gave it to him on the ground, and it was deflected up over the crowd, over the glass into the crowd. St. Louis goal kick with 6.54 left and 23 seconds left in the penalties. Bob, Coach Clements is playing with, he did play there with outdoors, three backs and one midfielder. He's still in there with a defensive ball club, and I don't blame him. I, I think he wants to make sure that they come out of this four-on-four, zero-zero, or one-nothing steamer. So he wants people in there who can mark up, who know how to play that defense and have played it outdoors and indoors. Very important. Slobo got it back from Carl Rose on the goal kick, looking upfield slowly. Line drives it, falls for Redmond Lane. He leaves it for Duncan McEwen. Duncan rifles it left wing corner. Lane trying to outspeed Clive Griffiths. Griffo got in front of him. That'll be a foul on Redmond. He was just trying to get around Clive Griffiths and couldn't. Griffiths did a good job of shielding him off the ball with his body. Back to the goalkeeper, DePede. See, they're going to let Enzo bring the ball up a little bit, then mark up man for man. Pesa and Clark are back on. Fredrickson on the far side for Griffo, as they call him in KC. Clive ahead for Zoran Savic, his first appearance in the contest. Straight ahead, Johnny Hayes. Chips it up over the top. Nice header by Carl Rose to get it back to Slobo. Distributes left side. Redmond Lane. Redmond to midfield. He's got Pesa down in front of the goal. In the left wing corner, Diego receives it from Clark in front. 
Diego looking on top. Sammy Bick, left point. Duran, one touch, takes a shot to the corner. On goal, and Depede kicks it out. Savic, ooh, a back pass, and Pesa almost took it away. Duran in front, knocked off the ball. Steamers gambling a bit. Now here they come, two on two. Down the middle, John Hayes is now three on three. Good job by Redmond Lane. Hayes, or Clark shooting, rather, and it's blocked by Redmond Lane. Good job by Redmond coming back from his attacking position. Here comes Niego. Catch it toward on the left side. He's got Sammy on the right side. Now Duran gets it to him after the defensive deflection. And Fredrickson shoved Bick off the ball. Griffiths back to his own defender, Chiraldi, in front of the goal dangerously with Pesa lying in wait. John Hayes down the right side. Savick on the left side. It's two on four. A lot of blue shirts back there. And Carl Rose took it away. Far boards looking back in his defensive end. Now the first quarter is moving a lot. We've got 5-10 remaining. After a lot of stoppages in the first six or seven minutes, continuous play now as they're settling down and playing some pretty good soccer. Steamers are possessing the ball tremendously right now. Now it's Neil Cohen long down the right side for Bellinger. Tony in the corner against Clyde Griffiths off the boards and Strimlaw left it back for his goalkeeper. Quickly distributes right side Greg Villa up over the top for Gordon Hill left side against Cacciatore. Gordon Hill juggling with it, centering it. Well, it looked fancy, but he got nothing done as he gave it right to Neil Cohen. That was okay for Saturday morning youth soccer juggling practice, but not much in the MISL playoffs. Now Greg Villa taken off the ball by Daryl Duran. Duran across the midfield circle with a nice move around Chiraldi. Down the right wing, has an angle to shoot, and he got it on goal. Depede fumbles. Ebert a shot, and Depede jumps on it. They're going to call Ebert for the foul. I don't know why, because Ebert was on the ground going for the ball. Didn't foul anybody. And Depede jumped on him. We'll take a timeout. 421 left. First quarter, we're scoreless. This is Steamer Soccer. Saturday night explodes with excitement when you turn to On Stage America. First, Neil Sedaka reveals a secret from his 25 years of success. I wanted the, the, the songs and the records and the fame. And how he's kept a family life and career alive. I wanted it, you know for survival. And the Osmonds are back in a spectacular salute. Plus, Mel Tillis, Lisa Hartman, Sam Harris, and George Kirby on Stage America. Sunday night at 8, here on Channel 30. Gino Chiraldi, long right wing ball for Greg Villa. Slobo whacked it away. On the far boards, Timmy Walters controls as he, Cacciatore, and Keo come out of the defensive end. Cacciatore leaves. Davis is on. Tie downfield. Five Griffiths slide tackles it away. Neil Cohen all the way back to Slobo at the other end. 3.30 left. And Tony Bellinger has it on the near side. Cuts it inside against Katsukas. Tony tries to step it to the left wing corner for Walters. Tasso made a good defensive play. Lays it off for Mikowski. Davis a piece of it. Greg kept it. Gordon Hill slows things down. Looking long up over the top. Taikio jumping in front of Katsukas. Tasso pulls it down in the corner. Taikio on his back, a shot. Oh, and Bellinger got there well to help out St. Louis. It'll be a KC corner kick. We'll take another quick timeout. 3.07 left, scoreless first period. This is Steamers Playoff Soccer. Time. It takes a lot of it to brew a beer worthy of the name, the king of beers. Time to select the choicest ingredients. Time for beechwood aging. And over a hundred years of brewing experience. All to make sure that distinctively clean, crisp taste of Budweiser comes through. Time after time after time. Somebody still cares about quality. Three minutes, seven seconds left. Casey, right wing corner kick. Fredrickson, Clark, a shot, score! It hit somebody on the way in. Kansas City leads it. That was definitely a ricochet. I don't know if it was off of one of our players at Kansas City. We had everybody marked up. They had to play the ball back. But we waited a little long when it went back to Timmy Clark. Nobody went on that ball quickly. Gave him time to wind up. And when you're in that close, anything can happen, and most of it's going to be bad. The ball went out to Timmy Clark. He hit the ball. It hit Timmy Walters on the way in. went off Timmy. Timmy went after it. One of those things. Of course, that's what you want to do indoors. You want to shoot the ball and let some things happen. 11.55, the time of the goal. Here comes Duncan McEwen for St. Louis on goal. And DePede is there to make the save. So the Comets draw first blood. Back on the defensive end, Sammy Bick just got it away from Tasso Katsukas. Sammy back the other way, down the middle, loses control and puts it into the crowd. 
It'll be a goal kick for Kansas City with 2.42 left in the first quarter of play. The Comets on this on the season had a lot of problems in the first period. They were always behind, but they seemed to be able to come back and win, at least until the last third of the season when they had that terrible losing streak and that bad streak. But you know, Bob, the games against St. Louis, they've jumped on the steamers early. And we've come back, and we looked all right tonight. I don't, I, I don't see the combinations tonight we had in St. Louis, but perhaps Kansas City marking up a little bit better. Not to be too concerned, KC scored two of the first three goals in each of the first two playoff games in St. Louis. You know, so a one-goal deficit isn't anything to be real concerned about. Bob DePetis handled four balls on the ground and fumbled all four. I know that the steamers are marking up, got a key on that. They've got to follow their shots. Two of those balls were away from him. In fact, Donnie Ebert was on one, and I thought the foul was on DePetis. They called on Ebert. But they don't like defensive pressure. They don't like our, our forwards pressure on, and we should do that. We're going to break one loose. That was Timmy Clark's first playoff goal. Fredrickson's third assist. Shot goes wide from Boris Bandoff. Slobo there to jump on it with help from Duncan McEwen. And he rifles it down the left wing. Pacer running hard against Clark. Good match up here. Diego hits it high and wide. Timmy Walters will pick it up off the board. Tries to play it around Mikowski. And Greg is called for the obstruction foul. Good move by Timmy Walters before Mikowski could react. Timmy put it off the glass and tried to do a 180 and turn around him. And Mikowski had to knock him off the ball to prevent possession. Now St. Louis will have a free kick on the right side, about 12 yards to the left of Enzo DePede. Carl Rose and McEwen there to take it. Carl, right side for Duncan, a little bit too hard. Plays it around the boards, knocks it in. Pace off, back to the far post. It's wide, and Hill knocks it away. Carl Rose picks it up, shoots it wide. Pace up, fakes it. And left side for Walters. Timmy trying to tee it up. Has a man open at the right point. Sammy Dick didn't see him. Now the clearance comes to Sammy, and Gordon Hill is just lurking around midfield, waiting for a loose ball. Sammy Bick on the boards, being pushed by Bandoff. St. Louis free kick. Ahead for McEwen. Right side, Bandoff knocked it away. They get possession back. Bandoff to Fredrickson to the goalkeeper, to pay dead. We're trying to force that ball, Bob, and we don't have to. Bandoff down the left wing. A shot score! The steamers got burned at midfield, and it's 2-0 Kansas City. That's the second time we tried to force the ball, and their third gave it up when we really had them three on two. Then they just came on back. Nobody picked up Bandoff, and he went on in. He hit a good left foot. Slobo was on him. He came out trying to cut the angle off, but he just, just the Slobo's right hard and down deep and right on in. Good left foot shot. Beat Slobo to Slobo's right. So with a minute 39 left in the first period, Fredrickson with two assists. And Kansas City leads it 2-0. Cacciatore down the left side, knocked off the ball by Schiraldi. That'll be a foul. Fredrickson's fourth assist in the playoffs in his second of the evening. Well, we need the next one. They can't get the next one. Has to be 2-1. 3-0 makes it awfully tough. Duran in front. Schiraldi steps it out of there. Bellinger for Duran. Back to Bellinger. John Hayes watching him. On the far boards, Redmond Lane. Back in the midfields area. Ahead to Cacciatore. Comets marking up well. Down the left wing goes Redmond Lane. Cacciatore in front, off the boards, and a piece of it. Kevin Hanlon cleared it away, and Cacciatore was called for a pushing foul. Clive Griffiths long ball down the right side. John Hayes had broken the wrong way. Slobo ahead for Redmond Lane with a minute left in the first quarter. Redmond down the left corner, at least heading in that direction against Katsukas and company, centered it, and it was knocked down by a handball. At least that's what Neil Cohen said on Kevin Handler, but the referee said play on. Katsukas down the left side. Neil Cohen looking to clear. Comes up the boards as Katsukas gambled and lost. Ahead to Redmond Lane. Redmond against Giraldi. Uh-oh, Handlin got him from behind. Hanlon didn't really go after him or else it would have been a penalty. He kind of shied away and still came up with the trip. St. Louis free kick, 38 seconds left. Bobby, Kansas City getting back awfully quick. They're, they, they're marking four on two. We have to wait. We're stretched out, getting no help from the back. Our midfielders and backs have to come up and support from the back. We'll never beat them two on four. They get it back to Depede. On the near side, Chiraldi. Comets would love to lead 2-0 after the first quarter. Now Bellinger a steal, but it goes all the way back down to the KC goalkeeper. 15 seconds left now in the first quarter. 
Goals by Clark and Bandoff, both from Fredrickson. And a foul called in midfield against John Hayes. 13 seconds left and the St. Louis free kick. We haven't had that many good shots. We've been on goal. We're trying to play the ball off the boards, which is fine, but then we need guys coming in from the back to get the rebounds because they're controlling all of those. Duran turning Kevin Hanlon a couple of ways. Six seconds left. Five as they get it away. Another whistle. This one against Hanlon. So the Steamers have a last-ditch effort here with five seconds remaining. Trying to get that first goal of the game. Daryl Duran right side along the boards with the free kick. He may try to just shoot one on goal and see what happens. In front it goes. Rebound. Hit Clive Griffiths. Comes straight down. Hanlon clears it high and down the floor. And that's the end of the first quarter of play. 15 minutes are history in Kansas City's Kemper Arena. The Comets came up with two goals in the last three minutes and five seconds and lead the Steamers by a 2-0 score. Back with the second quarter and our first quarter observations in a moment. This is Steamers Playoff. Consider the solution to your complicated, confusing financial picture. Anheuser-Busch employees credit union in their powerful daily interest fund, Unlimited. The Unlimited, one productive money management package. It's checking. It's a money market fund. It's a line of credit. Plus, with my cue card, I have access to automatic teller machines all over town. Bring it all together in one complete package. The Daily Interest Fund Unlimited. The difference will persuade you. I'm Rick Flair, the world heavyweight champion. A professional wrestling, as you know, is where it's at today. And the big 3-0 in the St. Louis Wrestling Club are coming on strong. Big 3-0, the St. Louis Wrestling Club and Ric Flair are where it's at. Woo! WIL FM 92 and AM 1430 with great country music and the $30,000 Whiskey River giveaway were such a success, we're adding another $30,000. From now until May 25th, any time and every time you hear Whiskey River by Willie Nelson in its entirety, be one of the first three callers to either station and win $1,000. Get your part of the $60,000 we're giving away on FM 92 and AM 1430. WIL. Lynching those boys, why? Because if the law didn't hang them, the next posse it goes out and say, hang them and hang them high, there's no justice in Fort Grant. When you hang a man, you better look at him. Use the law and a badge to heal that scar on your neck. Well, how many men are you gonna have to hang to heal your scar? Go to hell, Cooper. I've already been there, Judge. Hang him high, Sunday at noon, here on KDNL-TV, Channel 30. It's a 2-0 Kansas City lead after 15 minutes of play here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City. The goals came late in the first quarter of play. At 11.55, with only three minutes and five seconds remaining in the first quarter of play, Timmy Clark got his first goal of the year. It was off of a free kick from Mark Fredrickson, and Fredrickson, a defender, has turned out to be a pretty good assist man for the Comets of Kansas City. As he had a right-wing corner kick, laid it out there. Timmy Walters went to the ball but turned his back. It got through his legs on the deflection, and it's 1-0 Kansas City at 11.55. Boris Bandoff then got a loose ball down the left wing, blasted it right past Slobo to the near post. Boy, you hate to see your keeper, Bob get beat to the near post. Bandoff from Fredrickson at 13-21, but that was not Slobo's fault because there was a loose ball after the Steamers had gambled at midfield and lost, and it cost him dearly. Your thoughts on the first quarter? Steamers, I think, uh, first of all, Kansas City marking up much better, playing much better defense this game than they did in, in St. Louis, and, of course, that affects your offense as a Steamer. One thing the Steamers will have to do, they're going to have to come in from the back and support the midfielders in the backs and take their chances. When they lose the ball, they're going to have to turn on their heels and sprint back and get in behind the ball on the quick transition. But if they're afraid of a Gordon Hill and they let him intimidate them, then they aren't playing that kind of a ball game. I think the keeper is unsure from Kansas City. I think we need to get more people in the box on those rebounds and go out after them. We need the next goal, Bob. A lot of Steamer fans here in Kansas City will have some messages from some of those for the fans back home in the second quarter of play. Gordon Hill ahead for Villa as we started off. Cleared away by Sammy Beck. Gordon Hill shooting high and wide. Fredrickson pulling it down. Back to midfield for Gino Sheraldi. Comets are moving now from left to right in their home white uniforms. Good steal by Carl Rose. Here he comes. It's four on three St. Louis. Villa helping out. Creates a four on four situation. Carl was fouled by Fredrickson. They didn't hear the whistle. And I don't blame him. It's awfully loud in here. 
Down the right side, McEwen against Villa. Duncan turning him to the right, shooting, and a block by Villa. And if you remember a Kansas City game in St. Louis, Duncan McEwen did exactly that to Greg Villa and scored a goal late in the season. That time, Villa got in front of it, corner kick, but the same matchup and the same move. Duncan McEwen, Villa will not stay with him. You know, coming down that time, Carl Rose had the ball. We were four on three. We had them up by one. Carl did the good thing. He didn't have the good play. He stopped the ball and, and switched fields, and we're going to go from there. Davis looking to center. It does. Bellinger! Oh, Tony hit it wide. He came down the slot completely unmarked and got nothing on the shot. That was a tough break for Tony. Up the left wing, Greg Villa. Bellinger and Davis watching him. A shot goes wide. The crowd thought it was more dangerous than it was, and it comes back to Pesa. Slobo and Bellinger now. We're a minute into the second quarter. Casey on top, 2-0. Far side, Walters receives it. Timmy dancing the midfield across the red line now against Fredrickson, plays it in. Depede, hesitant, puts it into the crowd. That's exactly what Bob Burnett talked about. He is undecided about going after that ball. That should have been his ball all the way, Bob, and that's the kind of ball a keeper has to slam off the sideboards and clear out to that red line, and he made a bad mistake that time. The more he does that, he loses confidence that much more, and we can get an easy one, and we need one. Bellinger, left point free kick. Plays it in for Davis. Ricky trying to turn Chiraldi in the corner. Centers it for Bellinger too far ahead. Clyde Griffiths with the clearance. Ricky took a bit of a shot from Chiraldi in the corner after he centered it. Gino Chiraldi, rather Gordon Hill coming up, cutting into the middle, trying to shoot it on goal. Kicked out by Slobo as it got through traffic. On the far side, Katsukas. Gordon Hill is open. A shot. Ooh just missed he had a lot of time to look at that net and he just missed to the far post steamers can't get the ball away from Tasso Katsukas who is so strong Chiraldi Gordon Hill a shot and Bellinger deflects it wide steamer defense is under attack and is it going to be a penalty no into the crowd Slobo went down we'll take a timeout 13 17 left in the second quarter of play, the Comets lead it 2 0. Slobo is down. We'll check on the injury and be back in a moment with more St. Louis Steamers playoff soccer. You could win a. Steamers did not test him real severely. I'd like to say hello to Art Pemberton back in St. Louis. That is from your daughter, Sherry, who is at the ballpark here tonight. And Kip Harmon, our buddy, says hello to Rich and Nancy Marty of Edwardsville. Hello to those folks back home from some of the Steamer fans up here in. Kansas City. Bob Burnett has something that looks like the Gettysburg Address that he'll I try to read to us do. a little bit later. That's the longest message anybody's ever <laughs> given soccer us. Soccer steamer boosters. Now the free kick by Mikowski is headed to the near glass. Katsukas against Ty Keo. Back in midfield, John Strimlaw, the former steamer. Far side, Timmy Clark. Rifles one, right side. Sammy Bick a piece of it. Carl Rose, the clearing header into the crowd. Comets kick in near side. A minute 59 into period number two. We have to get off the track we're in now. We're back in the shell, and they're just coming at us. We just need to win one or two balls back in there and come out clean and change things. They have a little momentum going for us. We, somebody has to do something for the steamers to break it. Maybe it's Jeff Ketcher toward and I are in the lane. We need to get a goal in there. Stremlaw will leave it for Clark on the free kick. Carl Rose the block. Gordon Hill trying to turn it. Gordon Hill goes down hard, and it'll be a free kick at the top of the penalty area. Everybody in the Kansas City contingent thought it might be two minutes on Carl Rose. Gino DiPolito, or DiPolito, is getting excited, and he can't. He's the official. He has to have a cool head. Three-man wall steamers and look out. They'll drop the back, ball back to Mikowski. He's going to bury one. Don't forget Gordon Hill's a great shooter, too, That's and this right. is a direct free kick. He plays it right side, Strimlaw for Clark. Off the boards wide. Ty Keo picks it up. Straight ahead to catch it, Torrey. Here come the steamers. Sammy Bick supporting from the back. Three on three down the right side. Sammy, two touches in the corner. Looking to center it. Ty Keo supporting. Gets it back in midfield. Tie up the middle for Pesa. Niego trying to turn Clark. Leaves it for Bick. Sammy shot from way out. And Depede grabs it in front of Cacciatore. Boy, that's the first time he feels it clean. Cacciatore right, right there. He fumbles it then. Jeff taps it in. And that's also one of the few times the Steamers have had their backs overlapping up that that's wing right. to help out the attack, which you said was so important in this game. Got to get involved in the play. Just have to go after him. Here's what happens. Depede gives it up again ahead. Sammy Bick from Pesa, rather to Pesa. It was too far. Sammy with the steal knocks it back in. At midfield, Pesa takes a whack at it. Comes all the way down the near side boards. And Carl Rose looks to the far right for Sammy Bick. Against Strimlaw. 
Near side, Taikio against Katsukis. Carl Rose against Gordon Hill. Ken McDonald steps on now for his first shift. He'll beat the defender with Carl Rose. Makowski intercepts Carl's clearance. Right side, Katsukis. That was not a good pass by Carl Rose. Up over the top, Fredrickson heads it back in. It was behind Gordon Hill. Good idea by Mark Fredrickson because you're just not going to score on a header too often. He tried to cut it back across the middle for a tip in, and nobody was there. Down the left side, pace a beat. Clark, a oh. shot on goal, and Depede hey. made the save. Oh, what a turnaround shot by Diego Pesa. Timmy Clark had fallen down, and Diego wasted no time in letting that one fly. Anywhere but right at him, it's in the net. Jeff Cacciatore spotted him, gave the good ball, hard, firm ball. Diego spun and hit the ball great. Darrell Duran up the near side, ahead for Diego against Clark. Got around him and took a shot, but he was fouled first. And it'll be a St. Louis free kick at that left point. Diego wanted to sit. They played off for McDonald. Ooh, that one hit the back of Chiraldi and went wide. Carl Rose is on. He knocks Katsukas, but Tasso keeps the ball, feeds it straight up for his man Boris Bandoff and a nice deal by Daryl Durant. Here comes Daryl. Down the right side against Fredrickson. Looking in, shooting, deflected wide. Oh, Tim Clark got a piece of it. And Pesa called for a foul on Clark. That was a dangerous play, though, because the keeper, Bob, had the angle on the shot. And the defender almost deflected it in the near side. That's a free ball. Niego going for it just as well as Timmy Clark. He comes up with it. We get a goal. Thomas trying to make a line change, but can't. They go ahead to Fredrickson. He's looking to turn it on goal against Duran. Ricky Davis took it away. Here comes Davis. Two on two with Ebert against Clark and Bandoff. Now it's two on four. And Ricky wiped out by Chiraldi. They say play on. Now into the corner. Davis tripped up by Bandoff. That's got to be a foul. Goodness. How many times can a guy get whacked on the same play? There we go. Gino is there. And it'll be a free kick for St. Louis down the left side. Ricky did well there to hold possession, Bob, because it was two on four. And it's so easy to give it up and give the other team a counterattack. Pretty now a shot on foul. goal. Ken McDonald back the other way, took a shot to the near post, and Depede knocked it away. Looking long. That one is into the bench. And it'll be a St. Louis kick in on the far side. 10 minutes, 13 seconds left. We'll take a timeout. 2 nothing Comets from Kansas City. This is Steamers Playoff Soccer. Bringing you the best. It takes more than the best products at Schnucks. It takes the personal service of Kim Mason. She takes pride in serving you the finest domestic and imported cheese, tender gourmet meats, and fresh prepared salads. John Miller appreciates that friendly service. He sees the difference it makes for him every day. He knows his job is only what he makes it. And that personal touch makes the very best even better. The St. Louis and Mark Fredrickson playing in his 110th consecutive game for the Comets has both assists on goals by Clark and Bandoff. 2-0 Kansas City. Second quarter, Sammy Bick right side. Daryl Duran pulled it down. Darryl looking at the red line. Left side for Sammy. He's against Strimlaw. Cuts it around the boards. No one there except the goalkeeper to payday. Enzo rolls it out left side for Tasso Katsukis. Neil Cohen on him. So is Donnie Ebert. Back to Griffiths they go. If you make the Comets handle the ball a lot in their defensive end, you can give them some problems. And that's evident right there as Griffiths hands it to Sammy Bick at midfield. Neil Cohen back to Daryl Duran. Daryl line drives it in there. Strimlaw knocks it down. Sammy Bick at the left point. Griffiths in hot pursuit. Back to midfield for Daryl. Against Johnny Hayes. Daryl line drives it. Right side Davis against Chiraldi. What a matchup that's going to be tonight. And has been already. Ricky trying to go down the middle. Chiraldi cut in front of him. Then Ricky ran into him after the ball was away. It'll be a foul on number eight and a free kick for the Comets. Kansas City's a very disciplined club here tonight, Bob Burnett. They've talked about defense, and defense is going to win the ball games for you, and that's what they're doing right here. They've shut the steamers out and look good doing it. Uh-oh, Katsukas has Neil Cohen turned around, took a shot, and it was blocked by Duncan McEwen in front. Nice job by Duncan. Neil was having problems with Mr. Katsukas. Now Ebert knocked by John Hayes. That'll be a foul and a St. Louis free kick. In the middle for Duncan McEwen. Across the midfield stripe, down the left wing. Ricky Davis chasing against Clive Griffiths, who got there first. Took Ricky down hard. Play on, say the officials. That was a 50-50 ball, and Griffiths got it that time cleanly. Down the right side, Hayes running. Slobo trying to head it. Goodness. They're going to call a foul on John Hayes. 
Slobo went down to try to head the ball. I really wish he wouldn't do that, Bob. No, not that. He's going to get seriously injured trying to go that low to head the ball away. He comes out. If he comes out that way and he finds that he came out not quick enough, he doesn't have a chance, he's got a slide in there, a slide tackle. He's got to use his feet, not his head. Goodness, he's going to get killed. You talk about give up your body, but that, you know, that doesn't make, that's not good at all. Well, Slobo is shaken up. There's nothing he's doing to fake that injury, but I tell you, I think he'll play a lot more years in St. Louis if he avoids that particular play. That's the second time he's done that in this series. In the first game, he was almost knocked out in the first minute. He's going to do that. We're going to have to get a helmet on him. Or else find another slow as right. a, a backup somewhere. Billy Phillips very capable on the bench. No, no, don't be intimidated. He did. I knew that. Duncan McEwen fouled John Hayes down the right side. Hayes with that explosive speed. And the crowd may have had something to do with that. Oh, it did. He went in. Good slide tackle. Good contact. No more than when Ricky Davis went down the other way. But the crowd up on their feet. A lot of noise. Bam. Out comes the card. Duncan okay. McEwen, two minutes for tripping at 631. The Comets on the power play in the playoffs are one out of two. We are not as sharp as we were. We're a little flat. Maybe the weak layoff. But it's still early. We've got to work our way out of this right here. Stay in there tight. And a timeout's been called on the floor. We'll take one as well. With 8.29 left in the first half of play, the Comets are up by two and have a chance for number three on the power play. Back with more from Kemper Arena in a moment. From Kansas City, this is St. Louis Steamers Playoff Soccer. Announcing two new additives for Tropartic all-season motor oil. Sunshine and excitement. Win Caribbean cruises, plus stays at Fort Lauderdale's luxury Pier 66 Hotel. In Tropartic's Everybody Wins Sweepstakes. Game cards and entry forms are in specially marked packages. And Everybody Wins with 50 cents off your next six-pack or 12 tray pack. Thousands of other gifts and cash prizes. And the chance for the Caribbean from Tropartic Motor Oil. Okay, Bob, here you go. The Steamers Booster Club want to say a very special hello to... They want to say a very special hello to a person who is the president of the club, Sarah, who is at home and couldn't make the trip, but they know that she's watching and rooting for the Steamers. And I want to say that there are over 1,000 fans from St. Louis here tonight, and they're really making a lot of noise and supporting the team. Then also from Terry Fiala to her mom and dad, and a happy birthday wish to Janine Suntrup and to the BIS senior soccer team who have won their fifth Missouri Amateur Cup title in six years. They're here watching tonight have a tough ball game against a team that we're going to go and get Coors, the winner out of Kansas City. Bush against Coors. You better believe it. I go with the brewery every you time. You better believe it. And that's the one in St. Louis you I'm talking about. You got it. You got it. Gordon Hill right side for Timmy Clark. Power play for Kansas City. Cohen, Vic, Keo, and Walters killing it for St. Louis. Makowski shoots it in. Slobo kicks it away. It stays in play to midfield all the way back for Gordon Hill. Left side, Makowski. Gordon Hill, the quarterback on this power play. Right point is Timmy Clark. Left side, Makowski winding up, and Slobo went down to knock it away. Gino DiPolito got a piece of it, and Neil Cohen puts it way up in the air down the floor over three lines. It'll be a KC free kick on the offsides infraction with a minute 28 left. And the penalty to Duncan McEwen for tripping at 631 of the second quarter. Definitely Gordon Hill, the best passer on the team. And, of course, Mikowski with that left foot. Timmy Clark, good foot on the right side. Right side, Clark. Thought about taking the left-footed shot. Hill, left side, Mikowski. He'll shoot every time around the goal mouth. Slobo got a piece of it. And it's into the crowd and headed back in on a nice play by a fan. It'll be a right-wing corner kick for the Comets of Kansas City with a minute 16 left in their power play. Johnny Strimlau camped on that right post. Kutsukas on the left post, and Johnny Strimlau great at hitting misdirected balls, tapping him in. He's got great control of his feet, and of course, Kutsukas like a tank in there. He can turn and follow up on short balls. Tasso Kutsukas out on top for Clark. Left side, Gordon Hill. He's got Makowski in the corner. Cuts it across, and Kutsukas failed to tip it in from a bad angle. Timmy Clark to midfield. Timmy holding control. Beats Gordon Hill. Down the left side, looking to hold it. Cuts in front of two players beautifully by Timmy Walters. Finally off the leg of Katsukas, but Timmy wasted about 15 seconds right there. Now a foul on Walters against Mikowski in midfield. Well, that's one way to oh, stop the face. Hard. And it'll be a free kick for the Comets. Less than a minute left in the penalty now. As hard as Timmy's been working, we may need 
Bucks left side. Mikowski fanned on a shot after Gordon Hill gave it to him. Slobo with the clearance down the right side. Nicely for Ty Keogh. Ty missed kicked it and gave it right to Gordon Hill. 35 seconds left in the Comets power play. Hill got around Cacciatore. Now cuts in front of him. Back to the red line. Right side, Tasso Katsukas. On top for Tim Clark. Clark at the top for Hill. Left corner, Mikowski. On top for Hill, shoots it in. Nice cutoff by Go Sammy ahead. Bick in front of Tasso Katsukas. Here comes Cacciatore. Jeff has Sammy Bick down the left side. Jeff gave it up too soon. If Jeff held it for another step or two, he might have been able to break Sammy in alone. Now only seven seconds left in the penalty as the Comets have their last offensive thrust of this power play. Down the right side, Katsukas got it against Sammy Bick. The penalty is over. The teams are back at even strength. Duncan McEwen comes out and steals it. He's tripped up by Gordon Hill, and here come the Steamers. A delayed penalty coming up on Kansas City. They get possession, and that's going to be a penalty on Gordon Hill for tripping Duncan McEwen. Great. Good call. Good call on Dippolito to hold it because we had possession. We had the advantage. You know, Bob, we were talking several weeks ago. Why don't soccer officials call the delayed penalty more often? That is the first time all year I've seen an official right. do it correctly right. like the hockey officials do. Just a great call. Duncan McEwen, he came steaming out of that box. Definitely was fouled, and I liked what happened there because we could have gone in and scored. 8.43, the time of the penalty. The Steamers are 0 for 5 on the power play in this series. They One cannot continue to waste power play opportunities if they expect to last long in the playoffs. We're due. It'll be... Daryl Duran, the quarterback, Ricky Davis at the left point. Diego Pesa on the right point in front. Don Ebert, Timmy Walters. They will kill the penalty with Hanlon, Fredrickson, Timmy Clark, and Chiraldi. Now Clark will leave, and Clive Griffiths is on. Now Clark and Mikowski were there on the power play. They're going to have to come off against Kansas City now. They know that we've got Diego on one side, Ricky on the other wing, and they're going to have to honor him. And we played in St. Louis. We had some good shots. They're going to have to come up, but get the ball down deep in the corner once in a while and change it. Ebert be there. Duran ahead for Ebert. Left side, Davis. Center zip. Fredrickson picked it up. Hanlon challenged Ricky Davis, and then Ricky gave it up. It comes loose down the field, and Davis gives it back for Slobo. Ahead for Daryl Duran. Be a little patient now. Make sure the ball is there. Get the good shot. We don't have to be that much of a hurry. Davis right side for Pesa. The important thing is to get one power play goal. Duran beats his man. Right side, Pesa on goal. Depede dropped it and then picked it up before Ebert could get there. But again, Enzo Depede is not one of the better keepers at holding on to that ball. A potential hand foul called play on against Ricky Davis and Pesa hit it wide. Davis back at the left point. Ricky hit it with the upper part of his arm near his shoulder. That's why they said play on. Duran down the middle. May want to shoot. Right side, Diego on goal. And Depede punches it up into the crowd. It'll be a corner kick for the Steamers with a minute five remaining in their power play. 5.22 left in the first half. Depede under fire on the St. Louis power play attack. And Diego Pesa, he's hitting some bounds, but they're setting up for that. Pace is coming right to that side. You know the Comets have to cheat to that right side a little yeah. bit too because of Niego shooting. Right. If we can that get, may open up somebody hopefully. on the left side for a tip in. Got to look for it though. We've got a storm from the opposite side. Davis in the left corner. Walters and Ebert in front. Duran and Pesa at the points. Ricky inside. Oh, it got by Timmy. And then he deflected it by Don Ebert. Pesa holds it in nicely. Diego for Ebert. He centers it on top. Davis, two touches, three, four, out on top for Duran. Darrell tried to go back to Ricky. Chiraldi knocked it down. Pesa gets it back. And back the other way with 45 seconds left in the St. Louis power play. Need Five minutes five. left in the period. Four. Gotta have one sooner or later. Duran, left side for Davis. Ricky shoots it in. Oh, nobody can deflect it. Pace of the rebound, and Mikowski picked it out. Diego centers it again. This one cleared by Chiraldi. Duran pulling it down. Darrell, a volley, and Depede puts it away. Pace of the rebound in front. Davis the rebound. Hunter. That hit the back of a player. Ebert heads it back in, and it's cleared by Fredericks in the midfield. With that time, with 15 seconds left in the power play. One more chance for the Steamers with the man advantage. Duran down the middle, blocked by Fredrickson. Walters in the corner. Far Davis, Ricky, shooting, blocked by Chiraldi. Man is out of the penalty box, and here comes Gordon Hill. Down the right side against Duran in front. Hill went down. Play 
on, say the officials. And Timmy Walters has it for St. Louis. Boy, oh boy. Some crazy things happen when they those were penalties looking for expire, him. don't they? They were looking for Hill, but they still had the chance. We were back. We were good. Ricky down the slot against Fredrickson to his left. Fakes a shot. Leaves it for Ebert. Donnie on the far side for Walters. Timmy has Sammy Bick at the point. Sammy looking to shoot it in on the left side for Ebert against Mikowski. Took him to the cleaners. A shot. There's another fumble by DePede. I tell you, this guy's got the worst hands in the league, but the steamers are hitting everything right at him. Right at him. Now Ebert a steal in midfield. Here comes Carl Rose. The pace is picking up. Come Down on. the left side, Ebert in the corner. Shooting around the boards. DePede got a piece of it. Oh, Carl. Be careful, Carl Rose. He really came flying in there. Well, I'll tell you this, is either going to have to feel the ball clean or take his chances because you can't stop. If he comes out and it comes off, that ball's free. I don't blame it. We're going to have to do it. My point was that Carl came in a little bit late because yeah. one St. Louis player was already there, and that's the kind of thing that they really call in the playoffs for penalties. Now a steal by Villa. Gordon Hill down the left side, centering it. Nice block by Ty Keo. Clive Griffiths a shot, but it may have hit Sammy Bick on the way out. So Kansas City will get a left-wing corner kick with 3.05 left in the first half of play. Boy, Bobby, steamers are picking up the pace a little bit and looking better now. They're coming at them, straight at them, and that's what they have to do. Kansas City are going to have to tire because that depth has to pay off for us. Make sure we just stay where we are, 2-0 or 2-1. Don't let them get that third goal because it makes it more difficult. It'll be a right-wing corner kick. They've got Griffiths. Tom Alioto, his first appearance out there. Tasso Katsukas, John Shimlaw, and the trigger man, Gordon Hill. St. Louis with Keo, Cohen, Vic, Cacciatore, and Ricky Davis. You see if they'll drop that ball back like they did the first time. Hill tried to knock it in on goal, and Davis did well to knock it down. Cacciatore comes in there, and he was pushed by Gordon Hill. And it'll be a St. Louis free kick. Gordon Hill ought to be a lawyer. Boy, he argues on every play. Somebody ought to get, he ought to get a two-minute once. That'll keep him quiet. Up the right side, Ty Keo cuts it inside. Off the boards, he slams it. Cacciatore pulls it down. Jeff cuts it left side for Ricky Davis against Alioto, who just came on. Ricky trying to beat him with a couple of counter moves. Alioto made the steal. Off the boards, Katsukas was pushed by Sammy Bick. Tommy Alioto had a great game in St. Louis against Ricky Davis regular season. Did a good job with him. I think he's a good defender. It's the first time he's been in tonight. Up the far side, on the boards. Neil Cohen's got it there for St. Louis as he clears it down. In the corner, controlled there by Tom Alioto of Kansas City. Back to the goalkeeper, Enzo DePede. On the near side, John Strumlaw plays it up over the top. Gordon Hill, a, hit, a flick on header. Into the crowd it goes. It'll be a steamer kick in. On the near side with 2.20 left in the first half of play. And standing and sitting next to us here in the press box, one of my favorite guys who's on crutches, Tony Glavin. Spent a couple of weeks up in Philadelphia with that knee surgery. He's with us now here in Kansas City, as well as Steve Petcher's here also, rooting the steamers on to victory. It's a 2-0 Comets lead. They've been very impressive defensively so far. Down the left wing, Redmond Lane against Mikowski. DePede slams it off the glass. It's loose on the near side, and Shimla leaves it for Katsukas. Tasso Katsukas up and over his own red line slowly. Two minutes and five seconds left in the first half. They give it up in midfield, but a foul by the Steamers. It was either Keo or Cohen. I believe Neil Cohen took down John Hayes at midfield. The speed of John Hayes, Bob, is giving the Steamers some problems. Well, they have to play up on him, and of course, Tasso Katsukas is quick, and he gives you that little cute fake to the right, and he you play him to the left because that's his best shot, but he's so quick, he'll fake right and go left quickly, and all he needs is six inches, and he can unload quickly. Strimlaw ahead for Katsukas. Back heel pass. Strimlaw right side. Oh, what a save by Slobo on John Hayes. Beautiful play by the Comets, and a better save by the St. Louis keeper. Oh, brother. Great pass work. Sensational save. Down the left side. Here they come. Keel fans on it. Hayes looking for a shot. Neil Cohen knocked him off the ball. Play on. No, they're going to call a foul on John Hayes. How about that? Ahead it goes to Diego Pesa. They'll have to retake the free kick. Things have not really been that no. physical here no, tonight, Bob. Good ball game. Playing hard, good ball game. Both teams are sticking to soccer, and that's what we like to see, although I'd see, like to see the Steamers stick to a little bit of scoring. 2-0 Kansas City. 
129 left, second quarter. Pesa has a man overlapping. Bellinger down the right side. Tony in front. Mikowski cleared it away. It Bellinger digging for it. Redmond Lane centers it. Nobody there. What's the call? Always seems to go against the offense down there, doesn't he? Well, he's going to protect the keeper, and the keeper definitely came out and kicked with his legs. I thought it was a foul on him. I really thought when the official came in, we were going to get a, a call right there in tight. Redmond Lane was arguing about it with Gino DiPolito. I think changed a little bit tactics. Pressure all over the floor now because uh, they're tentative, especially when he hounds the ball, the keeper. Long throw by DePede upfield. Diego Pesa knocked it down. On the far side, Hayes trying to get around Pesa. Knocked him off the ball. It comes loose to Mikowski up the red line. Greg Mikowski against McHugh and ahead for Hayes. Taken away by Tony Bellinger. Right side for Pesa, left side Redmond Lane. Here comes Redmond to midfield at the red line. Cuts it around Mikowski to Bellinger. Back to Redmond in the middle. It goes right on goal off his foot. And DePede picked it up. Long throw down the right side. John Hayes and a great slide tackle by Slobo. Beautifully timed by the goalkeeper. Down the left side, Redmond Lane in front, and Pesa couldn't get in deep enough. We've got 25 seconds left in the half. Comets would love to shut out St. Louis for two periods here. John Hayes on the near side for Tasso Kitsukis. Watch him. Watch him. At the point, cuts it inside. Carl Rose took it away. Carl running hard down the left wing against Giraldi. One on four. Carl still with it, still with it, knocked down, and that'll be a St. Louis free kick. And Carl Rose gets my vote for the U.S. Oh, Olympic diving team <laughs> sponsored by Budweiser. Great dive. What a great dive by Carl. I tell you what, he'd be a hit in L.A. with that one, would he? We've got a timeout on the floor. Folks, a dive par excellence. I'll tell you, Greg Luganis would be proud of that one. Carl could have stayed up. There's the... We've got the time remaining. Six seconds left. Two nothing. What can you do in six seconds? Well, well, we can. I'll tell you what. There's a great guy back home that uh, one of the two coaches in St. Louis that ever won the national and North American title, and that's my brother, Carl, and his daughter is celebrating a birthday this evening and her graduation from high school. So I'm going to say hi to her and hi to my brother, Carl. Well done. Also, get your tickets for the Steamers' upcoming playoff games, four, six, seven, eight, nine dollars each. Available at the regular Steamer outlets, Famous Bar Ticketmaster, Team Togs and Tickets, Regal Sports, the first edition, and through dial ticks at 644-1700. If you purchase tickets for the fifth game of this first round series, and the series does not go five games, the tickets will be honored at the first game of the second round against either L.A. or Wichita. Also, if the Steamers win this series, the second round begins at the arena in St. Louis on either Saturday, May 12th. That's if the L.A. Wichita series doesn't go five games or Wednesday, May 16th, if they do go five games. Starting times for both dates, 7.35. And don't forget about those group sales. A dollar discount per person for groups of 25 or more. Call 781-4030 for Steamer information. Coach, with six seconds to go, if we had Tony Glavin, we'd put him out there and get the ball to him and let him crank it away. Ricky Davis, Timmy Walters, Redmond Lane, Don Ebert, Niego Pesa. Davis for Lane, a shot, score! Yes. Oh, yes. No time ticked off the clock. Well, don't, tell me, don't tell me they didn't count the kick. Oh, it has to. Wait a minute, that's a goal. How can they disallow that? The official says he wasn't ready. Oh, that is unreal, especially in the playoffs. I don't understand it. Steamers don't seem very upset, but what can you say? Well, it crosses the goal. Davis. Do it again. Shoots it in. It's blocked. Well, I don't understand that. First half is over. Well, who knows what was on the mind of Jeffrey Mantell. He just disallowed a St. Louis goal with six seconds left in the first half of play, and I sure like to hear that explanation. The ball hit a defender and went right into the net. Mantell, for some reason, was not ready. I guess we'll never know, will we? Well, it's halftime here in Kansas City. The Comets lead it by a score of 2-0 after 30 minutes of play. And this is St. Louis Steamers Playoff Soccer. And for you folks here on Channel 30 with us, don't forget the Budweiser Sports Break is coming up next with your host in St. Louis, Jim Duff. He's next. Push them, twist them, bend them, snap them on, and then extend them. Hot points. Sell them. Make a Martian, make a ship. Pop, rip, crank.
Gene Hackman and Sissy Spacek. Prime Cut, Sunday at 2, here on Channel 30. Introducing Cyberphone, the cellular telephone from Cybertel for businesses on the move. With a Cyberphone car telephone, your time behind the wheel is as useful as your time behind the desk. And that extra time for business gives you a jump on the competition. Wow! Cyberphone cellular is the sound way to do business. Hi, Doc. For every busy person, Cyberphone. From Cybertel Cellular Telephone, it's the sound business move. Sunday, Kenny Rogers brings his Grammy-winning hit to life when he stars as a professional gambler bluffing his way through the Old West. Odds. When the deal is done, you got That's why they call it gambling. That's a way to travel and see things. Fellas like you that give gambling a bad name. Would you like to have a drink? Kenny Rogers and Bruce Boxleitner star in The Gambler, Sunday at 4, here on KDNL Channel 30. When the deal is done. Budweiser Sports Break with Jim Dump. Good evening. Welcome to Sports Break. We're at halftime in the Steamer Kansas City game. Let's update that score for you. Bad news right now. The Comets on top, 2 0 over the Steamers at the half. St. Louis and Mark Fredrickson has two assists for Kansas City. Well, St. Louis and Steve Moyer scored three goals today and led the 1984 Cosmos over the Cosmos alumni by a score of 6 to 2. The alumni team featured all-time greats such as Pele, Franz Beckenbauer, and Carlos Alberto. The game was played at Giant Stadium in front of almost 37,000 people. The favorite horse did not win and no records were set, but there were the usual amount of thrills and excitement today at the Kentucky Derby. Swale, the son of 1977 Triple Crown champ Seattle Slough, swept to the first jewel of the crown with an impressive three-length victory in the 110th Kentucky Derby. Swale sprinted away from early leader and favorite Althea on the final turn at Churchill Downs today to win the over half-million-dollar first-place prize. The winning time, two minutes, two and two-fifths seconds. Three seconds off Secretariat's record set back in 1973. There are very few things that are certain in this life, but one of them, never count out the New York Islanders. Just when you're ready to write them off, they come storming back. The Montreal Canadiens have found that out, sure enough. Tonight, the Islanders beat the Canadiens 4-1. to That's a final score just in. That means the Islanders will now play Edmonton for the Stanley Cup starting Thursday night. By the way, tonight, New York's Dennis Potvin got his 98th playoff assist, and that breaks the all-time record in the playoffs, the all-time record held by the Canadian Jean Beliveau. The Cardinals' Bob Forsh is looking for his first victory of the year tonight. He's on the mound at Busch Stadium against the San Francisco Giants. Right now, the Giants, bad news. Giants lead this game. We have an update, 2-0, not 1-0, but 2-0, the game in the second inning. They had a rain delay at Busch Stadium of one hour and 30 minutes before that game even got going. Giants on top, 2-0 in the second inning. Other games around the baseball world this evening. National League, Montreal over Atlanta, 2-1. Pittsburgh got by Los Angeles 8-7. That's a final. Chicago over San Diego 6-5. Philadelphia leads Cincinnati 10-2. They are in the eighth inning. And New York is on top of Houston by a run. They are in the seventh inning. In the American League, Chicago over Boston 8-5. Detroit beat Cleveland 6-5. Toronto, look at this, bomb Kansas City 10-1. Minnesota got by Oakland 5-4. New York on top of Milwaukee 1-0. They are in the fourth inning. Baltimore leading Texas 2-1. They're in the fourth inning. California, Seattle play later down tonight on the West Coast. Okay, we're going to take a short break right here, but when we come back, you'll meet the steamer whose job revolves around injuries, and that'll be coming your way right after you see this.
Christmas buds for everyone who keeps things rolling on the mighty Mississippi. Break away, barge. Break away, barge. Please respond. Let's get him. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, it's Budweiser. Weekdays at 2, Lucy's full of surprises. Hi. Do you know who this is? I don't even know what it is. Get me a stick and I'll kill it. I love Lucy. Weekdays at 2, here on KDNL Channel 30. Bringing you the best. That means Schnooks won't play games with your money. Instead, Jim Scott has been busy stocking Schnooks shelves with hundreds of new warehouse specials, bringing you the items you use most, the very best name brands, at the lowest possible price. Debbie Rogers doesn't like taking chances with her family's food bill. It takes more than luck to manage a growing family these days. No risk savings on the very best. Now that makes sense. Saturday night explodes with excitement when you turn to On Stage America. First, Neil Sadaka reveals a secret from his 25 years of success. I wanted the, uh, the, the songs and the records and the fame. And how he's kept a family life and career alive. I wanted it, you know, for survival. And the Osmonds are back in a spectacular salute. Plus, Mel Tillis, Lisa Hartman, Sam Harris, and George Kirby. On Stage America. Sunday night at 8, here on Channel 30. KC95, K-S-H-E, Real Rock Radio for St. Louis. Welcome back. You know, you never like to see a player get injured, but this year on the Steamers, injuries have been a way of life. A lot of people have been wondering, when is it all going to end? Especially trainer Bill Jennings. It's interesting. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, different experiences. I never have two days exactly the same. CB, how do you feel as far as practice? It's not a very glorified position, but the players and the coaching staff and the office staff, they know what I do. And How do you feel? Now you're going to be the best judge of that. The world of this man is filled with bumps, bruises, and broken bones. But you only have to glance at his training table to realize that 25-year-old Bill Jennings is prepared for just about anything. It's a good thing. This year, steamer injuries have hit like a tidal wave. It seems like every time you look up, one of the players is going down. All told, there have been 93 separate injuries requiring treatment, the most in team history. In fact, every single player has been hurt this season, some more than once. You got 18,000 people looking down at you. You got a player rolling around on the floor who's screaming in pain. Uh, it's kind of aggravating you know you got a player who's rolling around on the ground you're trying to settle him down the crowd is yelling at the referees uh, the players getting upset you got other players coming over trying to calm them down and you have to make a split second decision as far as the severity and the injury and what's what to do about it for bill jennings injuries mean two things number one a lot of paperwork this trainer must fill out a lengthy form for each injury treated this year the player injury log resembles a book it also means that trainer Jennings must spend long hours stretching sore muscles, taping broken toes, taping sprained ankles, and rubbing painful backs. When the injury bug strikes, the steamer training room resembles a hospital, and the hands of Bill Jennings never stop moving. Summer, and they asked me to come and talk on the responsibility as a trainer. And, uh, I told him, you know, that a trainer is part doctor, part nurse, uh, part physical therapist, uh, part of a boss to the players, uh, part of a, a friend or a confidant, and part priest. You hear a lot of confessions. The man who holds all those titles has wanted to be a trainer ever since he was a freshman at DeBerg High School. As he pursued his dream, he collected plaques and trophies along the way. In fact, this trainer even has his own fan club, the Bill Jennings Fan Club, complete with buttons and signs that can be seen hanging from the rafters of the arena. Jennings may have his own fans, but make no mistake about it, he's also one himself. Yeah! Oh, my God! Hey, hey, what are you doing, Bill? Yeah! 
In his own way, Jennings is just as much a part of the team as any player. And though he doesn't score goals or block shots, he certainly is appreciated. There's no question that a trainer is a very important part of a team. Uh, one part is physically how he handles injuries. Uh, and another very important area is just how he handles the players themselves. Because part of our stuff is physical and a lot of our stuff is mental and psychological. Crack on the bridge of my nose. Right down the middle. You're fine. Bill, those hours are unlimited, you know, 24 hours a day. If anything went wrong with us, we'd have to call him, and he's always there. He'd have to come over and see how we're doing and stuff. And, and the stuff that he has to take care of before training, he's here at 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, and he's, he, 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 his day doesn't finish. When we go home from training, he's got to go there to the office and then on to Hampton to treat some of the players who are injured. So he's constantly going, you know, and the, the guy doesn't get enough recognition, I think. Just in the mouth? All right. Yeah. It's all right. There's no, no blood and there's no damage. Right I think a trainer's role is, is can be defined in a much more extensive way than just his ability to keep people out on the field. Uh, when a player has problems, a lot of times because he's getting treatment from the trainer, well, he becomes a, a shoulder to cry on. Uh, in other instances, he becomes a babysitter in the sense that when you travel on the road, he's got to do all the chores that nobody else wants to do. He's got to make sure that there's food and the appropriate types of food for players to eat. You've got to tell them what to eat. Uh, you have to possibly check on curfews, make sure guys are in. So uh, it's almost a den mother's role that a trainer plays. It's kind of a neat position to have because not only do you have the players coming up telling me how much they like or dislike the coach, but you also have the coach coming to me and telling me how much they like or dislike the players. On the steamers, Bill Jennings is liked by everyone. And whether he's offering moral support or something a little more substantial, he clearly is a valuable member of the organization. Being a trainer may not be the most glamorous position on the team, but somebody has to do it. And Steamer fans can take satisfaction knowing that in Bill Jennings. An update on tonight's game. Bobby? Well, thank you very much, Jim Duff. You've already seen the highlights of the game so far from a scoring standpoint with the Comets on top by a score of 2 nothing. I thought I would take this brief opportunity to bring a couple of guys to you on the screen that you have not seen for a long, long time. To my right, the motor man, Tony Glavin. Tony, how you feeling after the surgery in Philadelphia a couple weeks ago? Well, I'm feeling a lot better now, Bob. Uh, the last two weeks were pretty rough lying on my bike. But uh, I'm back in good shape again. You've got a long recuperation period ahead of you, don't you? Yeah, about nine months to a year. That's long enough. Hey, we look forward to you coming back next season, buddy. We need you. I'm looking forward to that too, Bob. And a quick comment from Steve Petcher. Steve, you may be ready to play very soon. I feel a little fine right now. I'm just waiting for Dave to give me the okay to go ahead and play. Is there a possibility we might see Steve Petcher before the season's over? I think so, um, especially if we make the next round. Dave has told me that, you know, he will play me in the next round. Can't wait to see you back. Thanks, Bob. All right, Steve Petra, Tony Glavin, I'm Bob Carpenter. That'll do it for halftime from Kansas City. Third quarter kickoff coming up in a moment. The steamer is on the short end of that 2 nothing score, Jim. Okay, Bobby. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for Sports Break this evening. Now stay tuned for more Steamer Soccer. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Duff. Bringing you the best. It takes people who are well-skilled, masters of their trade. And the professional wrestling, as you know, is where it's at today. And the Big 3-0 in the St. Louis Wrestling Club are coming on strong. Big 3-0, the St. Louis Wrestling Club, and Ric Flair are where it's at. Woo! Push them, twist them, bend them, snap them on, and then extend them. Hot boys, sell my butt. Make a marsh and make a ship. Pop, rip, crinkle, zip. Hot boys, ah. sell my butt. Stretch them, snap them, overlap them, never know just what'll happen. Hot boys, happy meal. <laughs> Get three Pop Boys pieces in every McDonald's Happy Meal. Hot boys, happy meal, McDonald's and you. Well, we're almost ready for the third quarter kickoff. They had a bit of an extended halftime show here with guys flying down from the rooftop. What are those Marines? It looked like an officer and a gentleman auditions out there. They had some Marines coming down on the ropes and some Special Olympians out there. A lot of folks in the crowd with American flags this evening honoring the Special Olympians. Boy, he had to have a lot of mustard on it because Slobo was there. Looked like he had his body positioned and the ball just beat him to the inside. Yeah, Slobo was in good shape to make the save, but enough velocity 
with the left foot and beat his man inside the near post. And we go to the third quarter of play now. The steamers in their road blues will go from left to right. KC has the one-shot advantage after two periods of play. The shots were even in the second quarter, 8-8. Eight to eight. Slobo has made five saves to this point. He made four in the second quarter. DePede has made nine. He made five in the second quarter of play. Slobo in the goal. It'll be Carl Rose and Sammy Bick in front of him. Duncan McEwen, Ricky Davis, and Donnie Ebert, Gordon Hill, Mark Fredrickson, Greg Villa, Gino Schiraldi, and Clive Griffiths are Pat McBride's Comets of Kansas City. Boy, if they have one, one goal tonight and they've played it very, very well that first half is to get all of their players in behind the ball and play defense, Kansas City, and that's what they've done. That's been the key, kept St. Louis off the board. I don't think they can do it a whole ball game if we can just stay tight in here and get one and sort of break the ice. The Steamers, with that great depth we talked about earlier, have handled Kansas City in the second half of ball games this year. We'll see if it holds true here in the playoffs on the road. Quickly a foul by Chiraldi against Ricky Davis. St. Louis free kick. Steamers moving from left to right in the third quarter of play. Duncan McEwen, right side for Ebert. Donnie back to Duncan. He tries to cut it on goal. Knocked down by Fredrickson. It comes loose to Gordon Hill. Gordon Hill right down the middle. Cuts it right side for Villa. Shoots it in. Bad ball from Greg Villa. Intended for Gino Schiraldi and Slobo said, thank you, Greg. I just don't think Greg Villa is that game fit, that sharp. I'm glad he passed it to the right instead of left because Katsukas was there. Well, Greg Villa is not a playmaker, and he's a guy who's a big scorer and a big finisher, and that's his game. Far side, McEwen tries to play it around Fredrickson. Tell you, Mark Fredrickson has been awful tough tonight, hasn't he? Two assists, and he's played very well on defense. He's the man in line for the defensive star of the game right now. Here's a giveaway a down the left side. Carl Rose over on this side. Ebert for Davis, and it's blocked by Fredrickson. Rose tries to center it. Ricky will pick it up. Pull tops the ball. Got a ray from Greg Villa. Then he's knocked down hard on a slide tackle by that man, Fredrickson. Now Carl Rose takes it away from Gordon Hill. Carl... Had a chance to pass it to Sammy Bick and for some reason decided not to. Sammy was open. Now Ty Keogh gives it to the steamer captain on the near boards. Back to Ty Keogh. A minute 20 into the third quarter. Up the middle, it's Gordon Hill knocking the ball down. And Tasso Katsukas picks it up courtesy of Mark Fredrickson and leaves. Katsukas down the right wing. Great shooter on goal. And Slobo knocks it away. In front, he kicks that one out as well. Katsukas, a good job to follow up his first shot and get that second one away from a bad angle. Now it's Peso, Walters, and Bick, three on three. Diego in the middle, pull tops it for Timmy Walters. Timmy looking for Cohen, ahead for Peso. Diego knocked off the ball. Now he's pushed off the ball by Clark. That's got to be a foul. Timmy and the St. Physical. Louis free kick. Peso wants to tee it up. Jeff Mantell. I tell you, the Steamers can't do anything right for Mr. Mantell on dead ball situations. It wasn't that big of a difference where the ball was being placed. I think an inch. <laughs> Pacer now shooting. That one's high and wide from the left foot. Steamers maybe a little frustrated right now. They're all right. They're coming back here. Get one. Uh-oh. Walters hacked by Strimlaw. That'll be a St. Louis free kick on the right side. Steamers, like they did in the first quarter, dominating early, but then they couldn't make anything of it. We'll see if they can now. Keo for Pesa. Diego gets it down with his chest. Ty has it in the corner. Pesa centers it. Stepped out of there by Mikowski. Headed back in by Cohen. Walters chases it. Centers it. And a good play by Tim Clark back to his own goalkeeper. Boy, Timmy Clark, Diego Pesa, they're having a battle out there. Two great athletes. Ball of midfield. Knocked down by Neil Cohen on the steal for Ty Keo. Nicely done. Cohen from Keo. Back to Ty on the near boards. Sammy Bick leaves. Bellinger replaces him. Down deep to Pesa. Shot deflected out by Tim Clark. Clark on the boards against Diego. Pesa still with it. Trying to work around him to the corner. Beats his man. And another foul on Tim Clark. And Diego and Timmy Clark. Really a good matchup. Just like Chiraldi and Ricky Davis. We need to change a little strategy here. They're looking for one man. Keo centers it in there it front. Is. Oh, Walters fanned on it as he ran right by it. And now a foul against Neil Cohen as he knocked down Gordon Hill. It'll be a KC free kick. I tell you one thing, Bob. Tim Clark has not forgotten that shot that Diego Pesa hit right by him for that first goal in game two. He made him look bad that time. And 
He's making Diego pay for it physically a little bit. That's a tough matchup. Timmy Clark, great competitor, and he will rise to all occasions. He knows he's got a tough matchup, but he'll play right there. Diego Pace, a great soccer player, so it could be a fine third and fourth quarter. Tony Bellinger a steal down the left side for Tim Walters. Tim Walters took it away. Back to the goalkeeper. Steamers have had the ball in the Kansas City end the entire third quarter so far. We played better than three minutes. Depede up the near boards. There's another giveaway. Pesa pulls it down. Right side for Bellinger. Tony against Katsukas. Tasso cleared it away. Now Gordon Hill cuts it for Kitsareta for Mikowski to Katsukas. Greg Mikowski on a break, but Slobo gets there easily. Ahead to Neil Cohen. Left side, Daryl Duran. Steamers quarterback, the team leader in assists throughout the regular season. Darrell coming to the near side at the point for Tim Walters, who's running toward the right wing corner. Cuts it back inside. Fredrickson all over him. Timmy shoots. Pesa in front trying to get position. Clark wrote him off the ball. On the near boards, Walters with it. Back to Duran. This looks like a power play. Daryl Duran in for Pesa. Turning. Oh, and a great block by Tim Walters. Oh, Diego had an angle on the shot. Couldn't get it away quickly enough. Now the Steamers get it away again, and another foul, this one on Fredrickson. And oh, Daryl Duran says, why'd you call it? I had the ball in open space, Gino. Nago also, Nago said, play on, we had possession. Duran shooting it in, up the field it goes off the foot of Mark Fredrickson. Bellinger back to Slobo, don't pick it up, Slobo. Out of zone in red line now. Looking down long, Cacciatore is on. Slobo plays it up over the top left wing corner. Pesa bumped off the ball by Clark. That'll be a foul on Diego. Oh, that was a long shift for those two guys, and Pesa gets off, and Redmond Lane comes on. Chiraldi up midfield. Gordon Hill back to Tasso Katsukas. On the near boards. Uh-oh, it got by Carl Rose on the board. Slobo tries to knock it away from Gordon Hill. Carl Rose back to Duran, and Redmond Lane back to Slobo. And Hill falls down as he loses his balance. Anxious moment. Redmond Lane running hard down the left side. Carl Rose waves him down and gives him the ball long. On the ground against Griffiths, Redmond Lane looking to cut it back outfield. At the point, Duran. Nice move around John Hayes. Darrell has Sammy Bick to his right. Goes up over the top for Carl Rose, but Katsukas knocked it down. On the near boards, Tasso Katsukas controlling for Kansas City. Redmond Lane in there, a foul against St. Louis. Catch a tour of the man whistle down. It'll be a free kick for Kansas City. Kansas City working awfully hard, and we are, are too. I think a break right in here, if we can pick it up on that defensive third and steal one. They're not that sure. We can afford to pressure a little bit up in front, especially when Gordon Hill's not in there. We can defend one-on-one, -on -one, even if he is there. We need to take some chances. we got to get on the board. Down the right side, Carl Rose, some fancy dancing with a soccer ball to get away from a couple of guys. Daryl Duran up the near side, plays it down the right wing. Redmond Lane knocked down hard Gino. by Gino Schiraldi, but a good clean tackle by the KC defender. And Clyde Griffiths goes ahead for Boris Vandoff. Vandoff down the left side for Mark Fredrickson. Fredrickson against Sammy Bick. And we've got a foul against the St. Louis team captain, Sammy Bick. And it'll be a left point free kick for Kansas City with 9.34 left in the third quarter of play. The Comets, two steamers, nothing. Ball in the air, Chiraldi shoots it down. Carl Rose the header, uh-oh, Swobo comes out to kick it away. John Hayes all over him. Chiraldi knocks it back in. Down the right side, Boris Bandoff against Cacciatore. Daryl Duran prevents him from centering it. Bandoff, in on goal, a shot, he hit it wide, and Hayes couldn't reach the rebound. Clive Griffiths at the left point. Now the Comets have the steamers hemmed in there. Down over the top, Giraldi in front, and Hayes couldn't get in deep enough again. Here comes Sammy Bick down the near side against Mark Fredrickson. Sammy in the corner, got it around his man. Keeper is out, DePede got a piece of it and hit Sammy Bick hard. Sammy gets up, he'll be okay. Down the left wing, Slobo knocks it away from Hayes. Bandoff shoots it and Neil Cohen kicks it away with the net empty. Fredrickson knocks it down. Hayes for Bandoff. Oh, and a great steal by Neil Cohen. Steamers give up the ball. Bandoff left side against Ebert. Griffiths with it. He shoots it in the right wing corner. Sammy Bick pulls it down there for St. Louis. And Hayes goes down as finally they get it back to the St. Louis goalkeeper. Great enthusiasm, both sides. Everybody playing, playing hard. Kansas City knows back to the wall. They've got to win tonight. They're very, very tough. Still tight ball game. Slobo's keeping it at us. We need one. Duncan McEwen down to Ebert. Donnie looking to center it. A foul against the defender that time. 
It'll go against Tim Clark, St. Louis free kick. About three yards to the right of goalkeeper Enzo Depeda. Boy, it's tight enough, Bob. We could slip one in here right now. Just be sure they're off. They don't know. We could run somebody through. There it is. Bellinger for Ebert. Davis trying to get a shot. It's loose. Cohen a shot block. Here come the Comets. They clear it out. Gordon Hill down the middle. Villa running hard. Oh, brother. Greg Villa just put his elbow up and hit Duncan McEwen right in the back of the net. booing for folks you're lucky you don't have two minutes he really whacked him he did he knew he was beat Duncan McEwen had position on the ball watch he went Greg, into him hard I'll tell you Greg Villa really whacked McEwen and Tony Bellinger right there he just put the elbows up and went after him up over the top left wing Donnie Ebert against Clark centers it off the glass it comes high to the near side Ricky Davis against Mikowski Greg takes a kick at him from behind that'll be a St. Louis free kick Steamers are getting the calls right now, but they're still down by two. Long way to go, though. 7.48 in this quarter. And then, of course, 15 more or more. We need that first one. McEwen on the free kick. Shoves it in for Davis. Ricky hit it high and wide and took a tumble, and Depede has it. Long ball down the right wing and hit Greg Villa. Villa against Bellinger. Cuts it inside. Villa centers it. Strimlaw. A shot and a save by McEwen. Duncan McEwen kicked Gordon Hill shot away. Now Ebert down the right side against Mikowski. They've gone at it a couple of times in this series. Donnie right wing corner fanned on it. And Mikowski gave it back to DePeda. Kansas City knows we're strung out. No help from the back. They'll just double up. That time Johnny Strimlaw came back. Mikowski. Out. Oh, brother. Jeff Mantel is going to call a penalty on the Steamers, and Gino DiPolito right next to the play didn't call anything. He didn't even stop the play, and Mantel's going to give Duncan McEwen a penalty. We'll take a timeout. Steamers down by two, back with more from KC. This is Steamers Playoff Soccer. Hey, Jim. Ready to go a couple rounds, man? Yeah. Hey, Chan, hey. how's everything? Ready to go? Are you good? I hear the same about you. Gotta reach deep inside. Bring out your best. Oh, the best. It has a hey. taste all its own. You get your chance, enjoy it. perplexes me when one official says play on and the other calls a penalty. Duncan McEwen went after Greg Mikowski yeah. a little bit but I'm not sure it was a penalty. It wasn't a penalty. First was of all he went foul. for the ball. He went down on a good slide tackle. Mikowski right there tried to get over the top. He didn't go into him. It's sort of Mikowski tried to go over the top and that, I think the official saw it late and thought that what he saw was that Duncan McEwen really tripped him up hard. Kansas City power play. Makowski shooting. Neil Cohen towed it out of there. Slobo would have made the easy save. Back to the right point it comes. Left point, rather, for Makowski from Tim Clark. Makowski shooting. Rebound. Goes wide. Oh, brother. A rebound just wide by Katsukas as Slobo had trouble seeing it coming through traffic. Ty Keo knocks it down the floor over three lines into the crowd. A minute 18 remaining. I tell you, if we get out of this one without a goal. Duncan McEwen also got a yellow card because that was his second penalty of the night. Mikowski at the left point for Gordon Hill. Right side is Clark in front, Strumlaw and Katsukas. Mikowski winding up, and it's wide. Timmy Clark cuts it around his man, Walters. Centers it. Ooh, it hit off Katsukas. Rebound, and Mikowski hit it high and wide. We're going to have to lean to Mikowski's side, give him the other side, but you got to get on Mikowski. Right side, Clark, back on the left side for Hill. Looking in, left side, Mikowski in the corner. Bad angle, here it comes for Clark! And it was deflected by Sammy Bick. Like a pinball, it comes out of there, and Ty Keo has it for St. Louis, and Ty has put another one into the crowd. He tried to hit a bender off the glass just a little high. Again, play Mikowski to his side. Ty Keo worked real hard on Mikowski. And in the backdoor side, if it comes out on top of the hill and over to Clark, we just have to hustle. They've got Cacciatore back in there now. He can help us. We've got 43 seconds left in the steamer's middle. Duncan McEwen. 
5.45 left in the third quarter of play. The Comets on top, 2-0. Comets having their best defensive night of the entire series that we've played them all year. They're very, very tough, but we're still only two back, a lot of time to go. Hold on right here. Gordon Hill, right side for Tim Clark. Clark centers it back under pressure. Hill a shot as high and wide. Strimlock gets a piece of the rebound. Bukowski against Ty Keo on the near boards. The face back on top for Gordon Hill. We've got a foul away from the ball against Ty Keo. Again, called by Jeff Mantel on Jeff the Mantel far side. Jeff Mantel on the other side of the floor with Gino DiPolito looking right at the play. Well, interesting evening for Mr. Mantel. He's called all the penalties. Gordon Hill, a shot on goal, knocked away by Slobo. Mikowski in front trying to center it over the glass into the crowd. They put Tasso Katsukas right up in Slobo's face to try to block his view. Mm -hmm. Slobo couldn't catch the ball because of that, but it was able to make the save. So now we've only got 15 seconds left in the Comets penalty. Kirk Rohn, the Steamers Media Relations Director, sitting next to us, heaves a huge sigh of relief. It's been that kind of an evening. A very tense one, a very exciting game, but not a whole lot of offense from a scoring standpoint. You fit, get the feeling that the Steamers can beat the payday once. A couple more I might follow, so. Bob, but... They really haven't had any good scoring no. chances in a long, long time. Other than one that we were on the power play, had some great chances to pay. They made some fine saves. Hold them right here. On the near side, Fredrickson at the point. Cuts it across far side. Sammy Bick fanned on it. Katsukas a shot in front. He Ebert should. will have the clearance. Donnie puts it down the floor. It hits just before it crosses that third line. And the penalty to Duncan McEwen is over, so the teams are back at even strength. Good job by the Steamer penalty killers. That's the second penalty they've killed... Uh, tonight. Gordon Hill to his left. Ty Keo knocks it away. And a foul on Hill as Keo cleared it down the floor. We'll take a timeout here with 448 left third quarter. 2-0 the Comets. This is Steamers Playoff Soccer. centers it for Gordon Hill. Volleys it on goal and Slobo. A great way to make a save and he held on. That's the important thing. He did not give up a rebound to Katsukas who was right there. He's kept us in the ball game. Kept it close. Gordon Hill long down the right side over the top. Katsukas a header on goal. Slobo the easy pickup. Left side Timmy Walters. Timmy to his left. Trying to get around Tim Clark who's in front of him. That should be a St. Louis free kick. Good hard work on the penalty killing unit by number 13 of St. Louis. Tim Walters. And with a minute 11 left in the KC power play, we've got 319 left in the third quarter. The third quarter this year has been a pretty good one for St. Louis, 57 to 51. A lot of penalty minutes in this contest, 12 minutes between the two teams, and two-thirds of that against the guys in blue. And most of them called by Jeff Mantell for some reason. Up over the top, Slobo to the head of Timmy Walters. Timmy tries to pull it down. Pounding Tim Clark back in the defensive end. And here comes Kansas City with 55 seconds left. Kansas City is one out of three on power plays in this series. The Steamers are 0 for 6. Makowski centers it hard off the boards. Knocked away. Another shot in. Oh, it almost got in off Neil Cohen, but a handball was called on John Strimlaw. The ball came in, hit the boards, then hit the hand of Strimlaw. Almost got in behind Slobo and Neil Cohen. And the handball on John Strimlaw. We've been fortunate that we've had a defender right there every time they've hit the ball off the boards, and that's so important. Now, we're going to have to watch out for Gordon Hill because 
was starting to lean that side to Makowski, and that opens the front door for Hill, and he hit one to Sloboda and a great stop on. Watch Katsukas, too, because he's due in there. Right side, Makowski for Tim Clark, who cuts it inside. Shooting on goal, and Slobo again fails to give up the rebound. Ten seconds left in the KC power play. Cohen volleys it up to Fia really nicely for Jeff Cacciatore. Far side, Sammy Bick. Sammy across the midfield stripe. That'll kill off the rest of the penalty. Sammy down the left side has Ty Keo for support. Carl Rose is back on. Ty Keo for Carl at the right point. Here comes St. Louis against Gordon Hill. Carl inside, taken away by Mikowski. On the boards, knocked off for Cacciatore. Carl Rose shooting, and Depede. How do you hold on to that ball? Made a nice stop. That ball was really hit. I thought it would ricochet off his leg or arm, and Jeff was standing right there. Boy, he got his hands in great position and trapped it right along the boards. On the near side, Makowski, right wing ball, nicely done for Fredrickson. In front, watch out. Zoran Savic is open, and Sammy Bick takes it away. Zoran Savic is not on the injury report, but he's played very little tonight. I wonder why. He hasn't really been producing in this playoff, and I guess, you know, they're going to let him sit, maybe keep him fresh. On the same... On the same hand, I haven't seen much of Donnie Ebert tonight, although Ebert no. is out there right now, but Don hasn't played more than maybe two shifts per quarter. He went out early in the ball game holding his face, and I don't know if he cut a finger in the eye or what, but they've got to play him as long as he wants to play because he's important and he's a money player. Right side, Bellinger from Cohen. Tony in from the point. Pesa back to Bellinger. A shot. Rebound. Pesa oh, that's true. was watching as Ebert was going in there, and they're going to call Ebert for fouling Clyde Griffiths. Well, Depede is starting to look a little better now, Bob. He's holding on to the ball better than he did before. He pounced on this rebound. Ooh, Ebert really took a hard shot from Clyde Griffiths, didn't he? But habits will emerge again, and I still say he's going to fumble one or two before it's over. We need to pound someone. I like what Don Ebert's doing. All the steamers should be doing. Follow the shots. Get in there tight. But again, not to be negative, the steamers just have not had many offensive no. chances. Depede has not had to work very hard this evening. You always see white shirts behind the ball, and that's so important. A foul on Fredrickson as Pace had it in the right wing corner. St. Louis free kick. Now here we go now. Pesa well, and Mantel you. going at it verbally. I don't understand that. Seemed well, Diego was, Diego was complaining, which he shouldn't do. Duran will take the free kick. Darrell centers it. Ebert fanned on it. Griffiths pushed him off the ball. Cleared down the field. Slobo has it. Tried to shoot it. It hit oh, off Zoran boy. Savic and into the crowd. It'll be a kick in for St. Louis. Well, Savic took that. it right off the side of the face. Looks like, Bob, if we change a little bit on our restarts in here, they're looking for that first man coming across the box. We may have to dummy him, hit the second, or maybe even go outside and come in with it. In the corner, Ebert, turning it, centering. We had a whistle before the shot. Come on, Tony. Tony Bellinger took one shot and then another one way after the whistle. The crowd was hollering for two-minute penalty for delay of game. Clyde Griffiths, the man, called for the foul. St. Louis, a free kick on the right side is... An American flag, miniature style, comes onto the floor. That's not very patriotic. No, it sure isn't. Here it is again. Duran, corner kick, Ebert, Pesa. Darrell dumps it in. Diego tried to get a shot, and Shiraldi knocked him off it. Ebert a turnaround shot. Ball is loose. Duran trying to center it as the ball got hung That's up right. on the top of the board. And they called Darrell for a foul. Well, that ball was loose. Oh, boy. Darrell was going after it. But they do have to protect the goalkeeper. And now we're only 15 seconds away from St. Louis being scoreless after three quarters of play. After scoring seven goals, in fact, 13 in the first two games in St. Louis. Zoran Savic a shot. Easily wide. Bellinger back to Slobo. That's it for the third quarter of play. Well, the Steamers, it could have been a lot worse. They had two penalties. But no scoring in the third quarter of play. We've got 15 minutes remaining from Kansas City. Along with Bob Brunette, I'm Bob Carpenter, our director, Tom Williamson. We're headed for a thrilling finish here at Kemper Arena. 2-0 Comets with 15 minutes left. And this is exciting Steamers playoff soccer. We've got the best right here. Right here where we live. It's good to know nowhere we go. Has got so much to give. Aren't you glad you live where there's colonial bread? It's baked nearby.
been sealed warm from the oven. So it's always delivered soft and fresh with the flavor your family loves. Colonial bread. We've got the best right here. An underworld enforcer challenges a big city crime boss. The stakes, half a million cool cash. What now, eat later? Ha! Crime Cut. A bullet-hard adventure movie of men and women in a world without rules. I give it just what it wants. Don't be flesh. Lee Marvin, Gene Hackman, and Sissy Spacek. Crime Cut, Sunday at 2, here on Channel 30. Gracie and Tim Lywicki getting a standing ovation from the Comet fans. They've announced their resignation at the end of the season this year. Well, they're trying to say a few words to the crowd, but the crowd continues to cheer. Carpenter along with Bob Burnett in Kansas City. Tim and Tracy Lywicki, the management team of the Kansas City Comets who have been so successful out here, have announced their resignation after the season. Obviously some differences with the ownership here and Dr. David Schoenstatt. They were trying to buy the team and Schoenstatt reportedly upped the offer after they had already made a, a verbal agreement or a handshake or something, Bob. And so the Lywickies decide to get out feeling they can no longer work for Mr. Schoenstatt. But you know something? I've got to think that Tim and Tracy Lywicki are going to have something to do with one of the franchises in this league that might be moving next year. We've heard about Cincinnati maybe getting one, South Carolina. The Memphis team, of course, going to Nevada. They have owners in Las Vegas. But don't, su don't be surprised to see these guys pop up somewhere else in the major indoor soccer league. There's no doubt about it. They're very marketable. They've been successful wherever they've put their tent up. And here's the latest right here at Kansas City Kemper Arena. I mean, they've really made this a show place. Fans are really behind them. And, of course, now the fans are behind the comments this evening, the players. And St. Louis has to get in gear and do some things different. And whenever you see white players in behind the ball all the time and giving their bodies up and running off the ball defensively and covering for someone who may have gotten beat, that's the key to good defense. Third quarter statistics are rather interesting. Kansas City had the edge in shot 7-4, a game total of 23-19 after three quarters of play. In the save department, Slobo had five and only one for Enzo Depede. And the saves in the game after three quarters are even at 10-10. to -10. Don't forget those steamer playoff tickets. Price from $4 to $9 each available at all the regular steamer ticket outlets. And again, if you purchase tickets for the fifth game of this series, and the series ends prior to that, the tickets will be honored at the first game of the second round series against either L.A. or Wichita. And if the Steamers win this series, it'll be game one in St. Louis of the next round, either Saturday, May 12th, or Wednesday, May 16th. The determining factor how long that L.A. Wichita series takes to play. And don't forget about those group tickets, a dollar discount for groups of 25 or more. For more information, call the Steamer Ticket Office at the arena, 781-4030. 15 minutes left, Coach. Got to get a goal pretty soon. Real quick. Real quick. Let's get on them. Let's pressure all over. Kansas City moving from left to right. They kick it off. Greg Villa against Sammy Bick on the near boards. Villa for Gordon Hill. He looks left point. Greg Mikowski there. Straight ahead for Mark Fredrickson. Gordon Hill on top to Villa, who tried to deke Sammy Bick. Sammy has it. Back to his goalkeeper. And a foul called on Greg Villa. <coughs> Slobo whacks it down the left boards for Pesa against Tim Clark. Niego trying to cut it inside. Plays it to his left. Ty Keo was not overlapping like Niego thought. There's some of that support from the back the coach talked about in the first half. It did not come that time. 
Now Fredrickson falls down and gives it to Pesa. Niego to his left, to the corner against Clark. He's got Keogh trailing. Ty has it. Walters top of the box. Dick to his right as well as Sammy, or rather Carl Rose on the point. Carl shoots it in. It's over the glass. And a Kansas City goal kick 54 seconds into the fourth quarter. Two to nothing. It's been that way since the 13-21 mark of the first period. Just pick up the work right on offense. Run harder off the ball. Get yourself open. Make the passes crisper. Get it to him sooner. Get help from the back. And we need a break. It's that simple. We need a ball to go in. Maybe ricochet off a Kansas City defender. Maybe somebody crank one hard. He's got to get that first one. Greg Mikoski down the far boards. Very slowly to midfield on the near side for Tim Clark. Worst thing the Comets could start doing now would be to stop playing and try to protect that lead. There's too much time left for that. Villa's in alone on goal, and he didn't get in quick enough as Swobo took it away. Oh, yeah, Gordon right. Hill gave him a nice ball. Villa just didn't have the foot speed to get there in time. He's a big guy. He moves well, but just not quite quick enough that time. Now he takes it away from Ty Keo and a foul on Ty. It'll be a Casey kick right in front of their bench on the far side. Good crowd on hand, but a lot of empty seats up top. I'd say maybe around 13,000 here tonight. The place holds 15, 9, 25. Greg Villa helping Thomas out by just by playing, giving Katsukas the break in there. And, and you know, that frees him up, makes him fresher going into this fourth quarter. He had a great chance there to make a 3 0. Just couldn't quite get his foot on the ball. Comets have too many men on the floor, so Villa has to get off. They're trying to get Katsukas off, but after you've made. You can't make a substitution when the ball's not out of play. The ball is in play on the kick. Now they're going to let, what's Bellinger doing? Tony's waving in from the bench. And take Carl Rose's place now. <laughs> he said, well, yeah. when, when we yeah. restart, Carl, I'm going to yeah. take your place. Carl says, all right. Mikowski up over the top, right side, Gordon Hill. Ball got around Carl Rose. He waits to clear it right up the middle, and Fredrickson put it into the crowd. Uh-oh, an anxious moment there part of the St. Louis defense. Indoor or outdoor, you want to make a pass across your penalty box, and that's nope. where it was. Not from the outside to the inside. That's right. And a goal kick for the Steamers. Now we have wholesale changes. Davis up front with Ebert. McHugh in the midfielder. Tony Bellinger, Neil Cohen, the defenders against, guess who? Katsukas and Hill. Fredrickson. Schiraldi. And Clyde Griffiths. Slobo and DePede. Enzo's had the better of the matchup tonight. You couldn't fault Slobo for the first one. It deflected off a defender, Timmy Walters. Timmy, of course, a forward, but he was defending in that particular situation and it changed directions. Now Clive Griffiths gives Don Ebert a good whack on a bouncing head ball. And down the left side, St. Louis will have a free kick. Boy, 13 minutes, 15 seconds. Still enough time. Let's play the ball back, switch sides a little bit, do some things like that, change it up instead of playing right at him. In on goal, Ooh, Ebert cut it left side for Davis. Ricky just couldn't reach it. Around the boards it goes to Enzo DePede. Up the right side, Gordon Hill cuts it back for Tasso Kitsukas. Here comes Kansas City. Down the middle, Kitsukas leaves it off for Gordon Hill. A great steal by Tony Bellinger. He and Ricky Davis get tied up a little bit. And Ricky goes back to the goalkeeper, Slobo. Up the middle, nice ball. Bellinger, look out, Tony. Strutlaw's on you. He puts it down the right wing boards for Ebert. Donnie turning it out of the corner against Griffiths. Ebert fouled there. We're close enough to get set up right here. Who will take the free kick? Looks like Duncan McHugh in the midfielder. 12.44 remaining. A goal for St. Louis completely changes the complexion of this game. McHugh in for Davis. Ricky got in too far, and then it hit his off foot. Gordon Hill off the boards. Clearance for Clyde Griffiths. Far side, John Strimlaw. Down the boards. Uh-oh, look out. Slobo is out of the net. Shot goes wide. Katsukas the rebound. Strimlaw hits it way high and wide. Slobo a little bit undecided there. It almost cost him. Hill couldn't get the shot on goal. Griffiths down the right side. Gordon Hill against Neil Cohen. Volleys it high. Foul on Neil. Neil is claiming a dangerous play on the kick over the head by Gordon Hill. Kansas City successful in switching fields, too. And that's what the steamers may have to do and from the back switch fields and try and get some from the back. Kansas City wasn't too well in marking with their forwards the first two games and perhaps they may get a little lazy now and we can come in from the back door. Clive Griffiths for Strumlaw up over the top. Slobo grabs it. 
Oh, no. Oh, no. They're going to call a foul against Giraldi anyway. They're claiming a slow will run out of the Well, ball. the fans, I don't know why, but the fans don't seem to know where the goalkeeper's feet is makes no difference That's at all. That's where the ball is. Now down the right side, Ricky Davis against Giraldi. Cuts it inside, and a foul against Gino Giraldi as a paper airplane makes a perfect landing and a St. Louis right wing free kick. Bob, this must be the eighth or ninth occasion that we've had restarts in this area, and not once have we had a good shot on goal off of it. We've got to change some tactics in here. Davis off the boards in front. Eber trying to get a loose for Duncan McEwen, and Donnie is called for the foul. KC with a free kick. By the way, we'd like to mention a few folks here with the Steamer Booster Club. Debbie Shelker, 20 years old today. Happy birthday to Debbie. And the Cacciatores, the Garacios, and the Severinos from the Hill are here. I hope I said that second one right, because Chick Severino doesn't write very clearly sometimes. And how about the Seal Flashes from South St. Louis? I think they're here also. Pete and Mary Jean Seal Flash. I saw them earlier. All right. They're hoping for a goal like we are, That's and a right. foul there by Tasso Katsukas. I tell you, I'm going to jinx the shutout right now and say, will Kansas City get a shutout? That should jinx it so the steamer should score. We've got be very Kurt rare Rohn here. We're going to ask Kurt if they've been shut out this year. I frankly don't know if they have or not. Uh-oh, Swobo's in trouble. Katsukas took it away. Gordon Hill against Duran. And Darrell made a nice defensive play. Slobo got himself in a bad way and got it loose now for Bellinger on the left side. Tony, long ball. That's a three-line pass. We'll take a timeout. 11-13 left. 2-0 KC. This is Steamers Playoff Soccer. This buzz for everyone who's getting the 1984 Olympic game ready for the world. Working hard for America's Olympic effort. This buds for you. Ball loose in midfield. Daryl Duran picks it up for St. Louis. He's got Bellinger overlapping down the left. Tony shooting, deflected, just wide. Paces rebound wide, and Bellinger puts it upstairs. Oh, that was a lucky break for Kansas City because Clive Griffiths was running full speed back toward his net. He deflected that ball not more than a foot wide, Bob, after the centering pass by Bellinger. That ball almost got into the net. Tony Bellinger, of course, had his man beat. Johnny Hayes got a step on him. That's important because then you draw another defender off of one of your offensive players and opens things up. Again, let's keep coming at him from the back. Make their forwards work on defense. Depede ahead for Mikowski. Gerald Duran watching him. Far side, Fredrickson. Up over the top of midfield. Hayes, a nice flick on header to get it by Carl Rose. He's got Katsukas in the slot. Header cleared away by Sammy Bick in front of Tasso. Katsukas pulls it down for Mikowski, now keeps it for himself. Still with it. Nice control. A shot right on goal. Easy save for Slobo. Tasso, nice ball control. Put it right into the chest of the St. Louis keeper. Right side, Rose. Part Tim Walters. Left side, Niego shooting! Oh, cool. Nice save by DePeda. That was a good idea by Niego, though. Long throw, Johnny Hayes shooting, and he hit it wide. That one looked like it had caught the far corner. Now the steamer's in trouble in their own end. Man open, Katsukas. That one goes way wide. Tasso has not shot very well in this series. No. Boy, during the regular season, he was putting those away all the time. To midfield. Diego Pesa fouls his man, Tim Clark. And it'll be a KC free kick in front of the penalty box. There's a battle going on out there. Timmy Clark got the inside position. Diego Pesa, you try to go around him and grab the official right there. Long ball down the left wing, over the top. Horace band off that angle in front. Oh, great oh save. what a save by Slobo on Tasso Katsukas. Maybe that's the turning point. Let's go right here. Boy, it looked impossible that he would get that ball, and Tasso was right there. Here's Pesa against Clark. Got around him. Now he challenges Bandoff. Now Clark again. What's going on here? Play on. No! Gino DiPolito calls the foul on Tim Clark. 
Mantell that time called nothing, and Clark was called by DiPolito. DiPolito was closer to the play, but again, it's always unusual to see one referee say play on, the other one call a foul. Ty Keogh. Pesa will take the shot for Cacciatore. Rebound yeah, score! Baby. Niego from Cacciatore. And it's a two-to-one game. Pesa's seventh goal of the playoffs after that controversial foul call. Niego Pesa, great work rate. We'll take a timeout. It's a one-goal game, two-to-one. And from Kansas City, this is Steamers Playoff Soccer. Bringing you the best. That means Schnooks won't play games with your money. Instead, Jim Scott has been busy stocking Schnooks shelves with hundreds of new warehouse specials, bringing you the items you use most, the very best name brands, at the lowest possible price. Debbie Rogers doesn't like taking chances with her family's food bill. It takes more than luck to manage a growing family these days. No risk savings on the very best. Now that makes sense. is a great, great finisher. He has more velocity, can get more on that ball in a quick space just like that. He followed his pass to catch a Tory, which you should do. He kept moving. Boy, now come here, on, Ricky. Here come the steamers back the other way. Bellinger for Cohen. Diego Pesa, great ball. Catch it, Torrey, hit it off Mikowski, and then it came right back to Pesa, who hammered it home. No chance for the payday. Now Davis intercepts. Ricky shooting in, and Bellinger couldn't reach it as they went wide. Steamers have to keep up the momentum here. We've got under nine minutes left. That goal was Pesa's seventh. Catch it, Torrey, second assist at 535. Cohen, back to Slobo. Ricky's well, got to get hot. Ricky Davis right now. Got He's rid of the shutout, first didn't goal. That's right. Kio ahead for Davis. Ooh, Ricky almost cut it around. His man, Sheraldi, who made a good defensive play. Ahead for Gordon Hill. Fredrickson, left side, Bandoff. One touch, two to the corner. Cohen watching him there. Bandoff back slowly out toward that red line. In a defensive struggle, you got to like the steamer's chances because that means Gordon Hill and Tasso Katsukas aren't doing a whole lot. Well, and I've been talking about Kansas City's defense and steamer's defense just as good because, you know, they held on the two goals and one was questionable. Down the left side, Cohen plays it into space. Ooh, Ebert tried to feed it in for Davis and a good play by Clyde Griffiths. Here's Gordon Hill down the right side, a shot. Easy save for Slobo. Gordon Hill didn't get much on it. Far side, Sammy Bitt. Under eight minutes remaining. Ricky Davis. At the midfield circle, left side, Duncan McEwen. You can feel the momentum turning a bit. Here's McEwen, Duncan to the left wing corner against Dula in front. Oh, and Cacciatore couldn't get a piece of it. Now it's clear to midfield. Steamers get it back. Carl Rose. St. Louis controlling that ball. Carl shooting, deflected in, left wing corner. It's in the air. Davis pulls it down. Ricky back at the point for Duncan McEwen. Seven and a half minutes remaining. McEwen against Fredrickson. Duncan, right side, Davis! Oh, he hit the goal post! Boy, oh boy. Oh, what a great play and a pass by McEwen for Ricky. Now Davis for McEwen. Back to Davis. Ricky cuts it inside. Trying to shoot, and a block by Clyde on, Carl. Carl Rose is going to get it back. Play on, they say. Here comes Sammy Bick. Duncan McEwen is tired. He leaves. Sammy down the right side. Oh, no, that can't be. Why would he give a yellow card? Somebody did something from the bench. No way. What was the referee? Why was he looking at the St. Louis bench anyway? Well, if he call, he gave a yellow card because one substitution, a man went in too soon. That's not right. For who? Carl Rose? I'm not sure, Bob. I think it might be a yellow card on somebody that was on the bench. Now Carl well, Rose I've got is rabbit upset. ears because the ball was in play. We had the ball. We made a good switch, good substitution right there. I don't think it was on the substitution. Some I, And if somebody said something from the bench, I don't know how in the world Jeff Mantell heard it or why he was even watching the St. Louis bench with the ball in the attacking end. We'll have to wait for the announcement. We got an official's timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout, 7.02 remaining. It's a 2-1 Kansas City lead, but a long way to go. From the Kemper Arena, this is Steamers Playoff Soccer. 
you could win them. And a lot of those, Bob, were for dissent. And those are the ones that just kill you. Because you're not going to change the calls by the officials, especially when you're sitting on the bench. You certainly aren't. And the sad thing is that we were really coming. We got the first goal back 2-1, and we had changed momentum. We were running better, doing things. We just hit the post close. We were coming forward and looked like Kansas City back on their heels. We're ready to tie this thing up and go away into this fourth quarter. Well, as they say, pull up the bootstraps again. Hold on. Can we do it for two more minutes? They've been sensational with steamers and killing off these two-minute penalties. Kansas City is 0 for 4 tonight on power plays for the series. They are 1 for 6. Of course, the steamers haven't done much better. They're 0 for 6. But this is the fourth time tonight. The f yeah, the fourth time tonight. I said 0 for 4. I meant 0 for 3. If St. Louis stops them, they'll be 0 for 4 tonight. This is the fourth time tonight they've had the power play. Steamers have had the power play just once. They've been talking there again. They're going to have a drop kick. Okay. Back in the defensive end of Kansas City. Ty Keo, Mikowski, and Hill there. Be great to win this drop ball. You know, I got a feeling that Jeff Mantell has been watching Neil Cohen, maybe because of something that happened earlier, and he followed him with his eyes all the way to the bench when Neil made the gesture. That was a two minute penalty. And it's a dirty shame, too, especially when your team has all the momentum. Even if they don't score, that's two minutes. You know, we have to sit back and fight for our lives, try and keep them off the board when we have them going. Just hang in there. Gordon Hill from Timmy Clark. Shooting. Slobo fought it off and caught it. They've got our front two men spread now. We have to be conscious of face Mikowski, and so doing that opens that front for Gordon Hill. But you have to play Mikowski. He seems to be the catalyst. The ball to him, he hammers it. Then they try and get it from his goal, either rebounds or ricochet in. So you've got to do that. Timmy Walters worked hard up in front. Gordon Hill, right side for Tim Clark. Walters and Keo watching them. Back to Clark on the right side. They've got Strimlaw in front. Katsuka's right corner. Mikowski left corner. He receives it. Keo hounding him. Timmy Walters came out to steal it away. Gordon Hill kept it in play. Now it's a five on three. Look out. Here comes Hill. Mikowski across the goal mouth, and Katsukas couldn't reach it. Sammy Bick clears it around him. Sammy fighting the midfield. Bumps there along the boards, and Clark held it to regain control. Does Sammy Bick turn it on when he has to? Woo. 48 seconds left in the KC on, power gang. play. 5.45 left in the game. Left side, out on top, back to Hill. Mikowski winding up, and Slobo punched it away. Hill, or rather Clark, takes it to the corner. Tim Waller's watching him. They cut it out on top again to Gordon Hill. Hill shooting it in. Bellinger clears it away with a header. 25 seconds left in the penalty to Neil Cohen. Ahead for Gordon Hill. Long ball, Mikowski. Bellinger took it away from him. One. Tony trying to push it down the wing. Good play by Gordon Hill. In front, Katsukas, and Sammy Bick knocked him off the ball. Uh-oh, look out, Katsukas with the ball, top of the area. Sammy Bick, and they're going to call Tas Tasso Katsukas for the foul. Oh, get away. And Gordon Hill is charging after Tony Bellinger. I've seen players get penalized for less than that. Well, Gordon Hill didn't get that too close. Tony Bellinger's telling where he's at. Gordon Hill's a lawyer. He's going to get a penalty. Right. Yes, sir. He should. He's Stay, a away. Liar. Stay away from him, Tony. Everybody get away. Except for the team captain. What do they call a double penalty? One on Bellinger? Gordon Hill is in the penalty box. I wish the Steamers would just get away and let him sit out a two minute penalty. They well, call it on Tony Bellinger, too, and Tony wants to know why. Well. We've got two people in the box right here. I think, Bob, that Kansas City will get the better of this situation because the way Gordon Hill... Now, remember earlier in the season, one night at the arena when Jeff Bourne charged Neil Cohen? He got a two-minute penalty for doing that, and Gordon Hill just got away with it, and then he and Bellinger were both penalized, so maybe Kansas City escaped a little bit there. Well, it's four on three with nine seconds to go, and then it's four on four. And maybe they can come back and help us if we can hold on for nine playing four on four with Hill not being in there. That's got to help us. Diego Peso would be fresh, put he and Donnie Ebert or Ricky Davis in there. We may get the better of this at the end if we can just hang in there for nine seconds now. 
So things will be wide open here for a while, Coach. We got 5-10 left in the game. Nine seconds for Neil Cohen to come out. Then each team a man short for the minute 51 after that. And that'll be wide open soccer with four on four, not counting the goalkeepers. Is it our ball on the foul right here on the restart? If it's our ball, we're yeah, in good was, shape. It was called on Katsukas. So the ball belongs to the steamers. Use up to nine seconds. Which Sammy Bick does by getting it back to Slobo. Three, two, one. Now the penalty is over and Neil Cohen is back on. Well, we need to get him across and get a substitute for him. Whoops, bad ball from... Ty Keo taken away by Mikowski. Now Cohen has to stay on the challenge as Ricky Davis was going to step on. Now he does. Down the left side, Mikowski up over the top. Fredrickson, right wing corner. Davis guarding him, tries to cut it inside. Good play by Sammy Bick. And Cacciatore gives it back to Ricky. Here come the steamers. St. Louis on the attack. Davis down the middle. Has a man on the right. Ricky in on goal. Keo is shot. Oh, and he may have hit the near post or got close to it anyway. Here comes Greg Villa back the other way for Kansas City. One on three. Has to hold up and wait for support. Cacciatore tries to get it away. Villa holds on to it. That's a physical mismatch. Well, we've got chances. We've got the best here, four on four. Get the ball. We're going to score. At midfield. They're playing keep away. They know that. With Hill out of there, they don't have the chaps we do. Mikowski on the far side. Under four minutes left in the game. 40 seconds left in the penalties to Bellinger and Hill. Down the right side, John Hayes against Ty Keo. Hayes looking to center it to somebody. Open in front. Oh, good play by Ty Keo from behind. He's got there just in time. And he got the ball. That's why he was not called for a foul. Hayes against Keo on the near side. Hayes cuts it inside, tries a shot. Keo took it away. Okay. And Tony Bellinger, I'm sorry, Tony Bellinger about to come out of the box as Slobo picked it up. Ahead to Ricky Davis. Steamers looking for the equalizer. Come on, right Diego. side, Pesa. Diego fakes a shot. Against Fredrickson, fakes another one. Davis, or rather Bick on the left side. Sammy shooting, and he hit it high. Goal kick for Kansas City. The penalized players are back on. That was to our advantage, four on four with Hill out of there. The only thing is, we couldn't get the ball. Comets held on very, very well. The two chances we had the ball, we almost scored, Bob. 15,000. 007 here tonight, 15,007. They must be calling the no-shows who bought tickets in attendance. And it's been a very vocal crowd here at the Kemper Arena tonight. With 310, Bob, do we look for our sixth attacker coming in? I would say pretty soon. A lot of talking going on on that St. Louis bench over there. What will happen? We're looking for Sammy Bick. Looks like Sammy is being adorned with the yellow goalkeeper shirt. And they're going to pull, are they? Yeah, they're going to pull Slobo right now and bring in Sammy Bick with three minutes and ten seconds remaining. I think that's a good tactic. That's what we have to do. No, no sense waiting any longer. We need that, that equalizer right there. Kansas City complaining about something. You can see the pace out there, I think, has affected Kansas City more than the steamers. A little more depth that we had is starting to be apparent right here. If we can get the equalizer and come back in there with Slobo and come at them, we can get this thing going away. But we need number two right here and hold them off the board. Sammy Bick appeared in goal this year in an extra attacker role 18 times, a total of 90 minutes. He gave up seven goals. Well, can the guys do it again, Bob? They've pulled sure they a couple can. of these out of their hats Run this year, went down by a goal in the closing minutes, and then a winner in overtime or whatever. Yeah, Ricky Davis, Donnie Ebert, and Diego Pesa there. No reason one of those three, any one of those three can put it in. Timmy Walters, not taking anything away from him. He's there also, so we've got firepower. Just have to make sure we get the good pass, the good shot. That's what's important. Redmond Lane's in there also. He can crank the ball. Final reminder about those Steamer playoff tickets. The upcoming playoff games, four, six, seven, eight, and nine dollars each. Available in all the regular Steamer ticket outlets, Famous Bar, Team Togs and Tickets, Regal Sports, 
the first edition and dial ticks at 644-1700. And if you purchase tickets for game five of the series, and the series does not go that far, that ticket will admit you to game one of the second series. If and when the steamers get there, and we're confident they will. Also, don't forget, Group discounts available for groups of 25 or more, a dollar off per person. Call 781-4030 for that information. The opener of the second series will be either May 12th, a week from tonight, or Wednesday, May 16th. You see how Kansas City plays this if they come up right away and pressure Sammy Bick when he gets the ball. It's their ball coming in. We get the ball back, see how they play it. Here they come. Tim Clark. On the far side for Mark Fredrickson. He lost it. Pesa got it. Had to back heel at the midfield, but St. Louis couldn't get it. Under three minutes left. Tasso Kitsukas. A shot and a save by Ricky Davis. Nicely done. Fredrickson around the glass and high. Davis and Chiraldi battling. St. Louis finally gets the ball, but it's going to be a foul on Ricky Davis. Well, we need that ball. Can't wait now. They'll play the ball all the way back, I'm sure, and just play possession. We're going to have to mark up, but then be careful up in front. If you work hard with the player on the ball defensively, that's fine, but the players off the ball give them too much space and don't mark up. They'll be there all day. Kitsukas, Fredrickson, Makowski at the point. Over the top, Chiraldi against Davis. Steamers, Redmond Lane trying to get it back. Finally does, but Fredrickson stole it back. Makowski at midfield. Redmond Lane pressuring Clark. They hand it right to Pesa. Here comes Niego. Down the left side for Redmond Lane. In the corner, Donnie Ebert. Ebert back out toward the point. Now they set it up. Here's Sammy Bick. Right side for Ricky Davis. 2.16 left in the game. Left side, Redmond Lane wants to crank it up. Off the boards in front. Pulled down easily by Clark. Here comes Kitsukas. Ricky Davis trying to catch up with him. Oh, beautiful what a beautiful play. play by Sammy Bick. He headed it over the glass. Kitsukas had the, he had the net labeled. That would have done it just about. Like a center fielder sprinting back with the ball directly over his head. Sammy left his feet. Great head ball and got some velocity and over the top. That was a ball game. We're on offense. We've got to work a little bit more. We took the ball off the board and nobody in the box. You're going to have to stomp. Whether you lose 2-1 or 3-1 makes no difference. Have to take chances. Fredrickson for Mikowski. Out on top, Kitsukas. Davis with the steal. Pesa. And Ricky was fouled by Gino Chiraldi. So with 156, the Steamers get it back. I think they've got a play to, Steamers have to play to their right side. That's where we've got the gun. Diego Pesa, if anything, they're going to have to get the ball to him that's going to force them on him again just like we're in the power play situation then he can play off in the corner we're not using the guys that score in there on those situations Don Ebert's got to touch the ball once in a while Edmund Lane for Sammy Bick at midfield a minute 40 remaining in the game left side Redmond Lane at the point Steamers are not moving off the ball very much Ricky Davis oh a good block by Tasso Kitsukas Ricky had that volley going and he was ready to bury that thing. Now a kick in. They'll make him restart it. Well, I look back at that restart. They took the goal away from us right before the half, the first half. St. Louis wants another timeout, Bob, with a minute 32 remaining. Coach Clemens not happy. Wants to give him some strategy here. They're going to have to do some things different. Now's the time to do it. Good call. By the way, Coach, did you know that you and I were announcing the game for the folks in Kansas City for the first quarter tonight? No, I didn't know that. Why was that? I wonder if it's safe for us to leave here tonight. <laughs> well, some of the signals got crossed, and we oh, were in, I, I well, were on Channel 5 up here. That's great. That's all right. As long as we're back to the folks in St. Louis, that's the important thing to us. Boy, Donnie Ebert down there, he's, giving, he's talking with the players also. I know he's saying the same thing. He's a, Donnie's a real leader in this sort of yes, situation. He, he and Ricky Davis both. That's the guy you want in there. If you need that key goal, Ricky Davis, they're due. He and Donnie are both are due. Boy, now's the time to get that first goal of the playoff and tie the darn thing up. Redmond Lane, if he receives a ball and doesn't have something definite with it, release the ball back, but don't hold it. That gives the defense a chance to shift. He's got to move the ball quicker. 
Timmy Clark had a great defensive ball game tonight, but Niego Pesa worked and worked and got a fantastic goal. Mark Fredrickson's been tough for the Comets, too. Yes, he has. With worked two assists hard. this yes, evening. Yes, he has. A minute 32 remaining. The crowd awakens again. And we're headed for a thrilling finish. Ricky Davis right here. will kick it in on the right wing. On top for Sammy Bick. Left wing Redmond Lane at the point. Shoots it in, and Ebert was right there. Who did hit? They're going to call it a corner kick for St. Louis. That's what they said. Play it to Lane. Don't wait too long. Crank the ball. Then force from the other side. And Donnie almost got the foot on her. Ricky Davis will take the corner on yeah. the left side. Timmy Walters is in there. Ebert Lane. Vic and Pesa. Ricky dumps it in high. Oh, brother, hit the glass and went right up over the top. He, he tried to scoop yeah, it. Yeah, he's trying to scoop it. Again, tried to force it because they were really shoved in there tight. Better um, maybe play it back and the other side. Diego coming on the first time the ball. A minute 25 remaining. De Payday. Need the ball. It. On the right side, Katsukas in on goal. Redmond Lane knocked him off the ball. Here comes Ricky Davis. Ricky to Ebert. Ebert back to Timmy Walters. We got a minute five remaining. On the left side, Redmond Lane. Far Davis, look out, Ricky. Uh-oh, he was hit hard by Fredrickson. Left side, Redmond Lane. Oh, Sammy Ricky. Bick, right side, hit Davis. It. Ricky in the corner. Oh, they couldn't gotta shoot the, the ball. Diego knocked down, or Ebert rather. They're going to say he knocked down Mikowski. Ricky's got to shoot that ball, Bob. That's right, he had to. Shoot the ball, then things happen. Can't get cute now. 49 seconds left. Steamer's got to get a goal, or we'll be back here on Wednesday night. To payday. Still time. We need to get the ball right here. Throws it upfield. Far side. Oh, there it is. Redmond Lane trapped it. It went over the boards with 34 seconds left. Kansas City kick in. It doesn't look good, does it? Only takes one second to do it, but we need the ball. Take a chance here. Somebody anticipate. Try and steal the ball. Let's go after him. Makowski dumps it in. Gordon Hill sends in his man, Chiraldi. There it is. Back Come on, Hill. there's a chance. Gave it right to Pesa. Here comes Diego with 24 seconds remaining. At the point, Steamer's a final chance to set it up and a foul call on Gino Chiraldi. 21 seconds left. Oh, clock stop. We're all right. Let's get set up. We don't have to hurry now. Make sure. Davis, far pace Play it back. Diego fakes his shot. Out on top, Davis. Ricky's got to hit it. Right side, Diego. And it's deflected wide. Walters blocked by the defense. Timmy Clark on the block. And that's going to do it, folks. I don't think they got enough time. The Comets win it by a score of two to one. Great ball game. Great ball game, both sides. Played very, very hard. Great defense on Kansas City. Great defense for the Steamers. Lobo kept them in the ball game all night. Well, you knew it was going to come to that, Bob. Both sides just. Had great offensive shows. That'll make an interesting Wednesday night. We'll be back here on Wednesday. The Steamers lose it 2-1 to the Kansas City Comets. It's 2-1 St. Louis in the series. But the Steamers only have to win one of the next two to clinch things against the Comets of KC. Back with more from the Kemper Arena in a moment. This is St. Louis Steamers playoff soccer. Early in the year, these guys were down here scouting the kids. Now they're back looking for help. The best has a taste all its own. Bob, you got it. Enjoy it. Introducing Cyberphone, the cellular telephone from Cybertel.
for businesses on the move. With a Cyberphone car telephone, your time behind the wheel is as useful as your time behind the desk. And that extra time for business gives you a jump on a competition. Wow! Cyberphone Cellular is the sound way to do business. Hi, Doc. For every busy person. Cyberphone. From Cybertel Cellular Telephone, it's the sound business move. Consider the solution to your complicated, confusing financial picture. Anheuser-Busch employees credit union in their powerful daily interest fund, Unlimited. The Unlimited, one productive money management package. It's checking. It's a money market fund. It's a line of credit. Plus, with my Q card, I have access to automatic teller machines all over town. Bring it all together in one complete package. The daily interest fund, Unlimited. The difference will persuade you. Bringing you the best, that means taking the extra step at Schnucks. Ask Tony Vince. He starts early every morning dealing with growers from around the world to select the finest nature offers. Fresh produce is always in season at Schnucks. Ann Richards likes that. She knows some jobs just can't be done from 9 to 5. She appreciates the time and dedication it takes to ensure quality. After all, there's simply no substitute for the very best. A tough one to swallow on the road for St. Louis. And life has been tough on the road all year long. This is only the second loss by this team in this building in the four games played here this year. Steamers won two out of three here during the regular season. And the Comets won two out of three at the arena in St. Louis before the Steamers took their first two of this playoff series. So it's a 2-1 lead. And it's not a critical situation yet. You'd love to see the guys end it in three games but obviously it's not to be because it is oh so difficult to win in this league on the road the offensive star of the game Timmy Clark he's a defender who has two assists for Kansas City tonight the defensive star of the game was Enzo to payday the steamers did not test him they did not test him as severely in the ball game tonight as they could have. They just didn't have too many outstanding scoring opportunities, mostly because of the fine play of the Comets on defense. And guys like Timmy Clark, a big reason for that. Also, that young man who made so many fine plays and got a couple of assists, Mark Fredrickson. He was a tough one, and so was Timmy Clark. A defensive story for Kansas City tonight as they beat the Steamers by a score of 2-1. to one. Back with the final word from the Kemper Arena in a moment. The Steamers lose it 2-1. This is St. Louis Steamers. Announcing two new additives for Trop Arctic all-season motor oil. Sunshine and excitement. Win Caribbean cruises, plus stays at Fort Lauderdale's luxury Pier 66 Hotel. In Trop Arctic's Everybody Wins Sweepstakes. Game cards and entry forms are in specially marked packages. And Everybody Wins with 50 cents off your next six-pack or 12 tray pack. Thousands of other gifts and cash prizes. And the chance for the Caribbean from Trop Arctic Motor Oil. Pull them, push them, twist them, bend them, snap them on, and then extend them. Hot boys! Sell a bun! Make a marsh and make your ship pop, rip, crinkle, zip. Hot boys! Ah. Sell a bun! Stretch them, snap them, overlap them, never know just what'll happen. Hot boys! Happy meal! <laughs> Get three Pop Boys pieces in every McDonald's Happy Meal! Hot boys! Happy Meal! McDonald's and you! Enroll. I'm Rick Flair, the world heavyweight champion. And professional wrestling, as you know, is where it's at today. And the big 3-0 in the St. Louis Wrestling Club are coming on strong. Big 3-0, the St. Louis Wrestling Club and Ric Flair are where it's at. Woo! Well, the last thing we wanted was another trip to Kansas City coming up next week. Not that we don't like this place, but we've got to come back for game four on Wednesday night as the steamers were knocked off tonight by a very good defensive Kansas City effort. They won it 2-1. And I say hats off to Pat McBride and his defense. Those guys did a great job. You're talking about people like Clyde Griffiths and, of course, the young American Mark Fredrickson who had a couple of assists, the guy from St. Louis. Timmy Clark was chosen the game's outstanding offensive player of the game. And uh, they did a great job tonight. Greg Mikowski, that's all, all you can say. Enzo DePede did not have that difficult of a night in the goal tonight, but his defenders made things easy for him most of the time. So we will be back here on Wednesday night for game four of the series. Game five, if necessary, at the arena a week from tonight.
Hope you enjoyed the telecast and the radio broadcast tonight. It was authorized and our broadcasting rights granted by the St. Louis Steamer Soccer Club solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the St. Louis Steamer Soccer Club is prohibited. Here's truly Bob Carpenter and Bob Burnett are employed by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated. This has been an Anheuser-Busch presentation. The Comets victorious 2-1. That's also the score in the series, but the Steamers are still on top. We'll see you again Wednesday night from the Kemper Arena where another big crowd will gather and these two teams will battle it out once more. For our director producer, Tom Williamson, also for Bob Burnett, I'm Bob Carpenter. Good night from Kansas City. This is Steamers Playoff Soccer.